Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Resonance Arcade. It's Wednesday night, and we're live. Hi. Hey. Hello. As you can see, we've got a guest with us today. We've got Patrick Imun... Imu I can... <laughs> Im Imruniel. Im Come on, it's easy. You can do it. Imu... Im Im oh Im Imruniel. You know what? I've practiced it all day. I've, pra I've sat there and I've went... Right, I know there's no I at the beginning. Im Imruniel. Imu Imruniel. Can you say, can you say Ru? Can yeah. you say Ru? Imruniel. Ru. Imruniel. Yeah. Ru yeah. Or can you say Patrick? <laughs> Patrick. Patrick <laughs> Imunriel Imun or whatever. Kat uh. Kualik, who is a game developer, uh, fellow game dev, yeah. and uh, I'll let him introduce himself. Go on. Oh my, oh my god, again? Again? Sweet. So uh, <laughs> I'm, Pat I'm Patrick Kowalik, and I'm currently artist for Elysian Shadows, a game for Sega Dreamcast, but also for modern things. Uh, so, if you've been wondering if the very, very old console from 1998 is still relevant, it fucking is. <laughs> <laughs> nice introduction. Good, good. Uh, and as you can see, we've got Lou and Steve with us today as well. Welcome back, guys. Or welcome back, Steve, Hi. rather. I think uh, last week you were you were otherwise engaged, weren't you, Steve? Yeah, I've been pretty much for the past two weeks, but uh, I'm back now. Yeah, you've, uh, I th I, you, you've not moved yet, I'm presuming? You can still uh, see the, the... You never moved from yeah. this chair. I've just, <laughs> just been sat here for two weeks. The entire two weeks. <laughs> uh, so those of you who have not seen us before, we are a game, uh, well, a games talk show, essentially, but um, this week's episode's going to be very game dev heavy. One of the reasons being that Game Developers Conference in San Francisco kicked off this week and there's been lots of new announcements. Lots of very, very exciting announcements, in, in for me, anyway, particularly, but there's also a couple of other ones that, uh, that we'll talk about. Neither of us, well, neither of us, none of us, um, none of our, us regular hosts, anyway, have played many games this week. I've uh, played a few games that I've been playing, you know, I've played Wolfenstein New Order and Hitman Absolution, but I've already talked about them, so there's no point in going through them again. Patrick has had a few games that you've played. A lot. On top of, on, a lot, on top, <laughs> on top of his game dev. I've been, I've been doing everything uh, I've, game dev this week. I've, I've just not had too much time. So yes, in, uh, in, traditional, uh, in traditional manner, if you are offended by swearing, you probably are already already are offended because uh, Patrick's already hit that nail on the head. One in already. I totally forgot. That. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> We've lost um, our audience, Patrick. What have yeah. you done? Oh my god! PG so, 13 no more. But yeah. So oh wait, you, wait, no, no, no. It's BBC rules. We are allowed one swear word per episode, right, or two? Oh, is that how it works on BBC? Yeah. I, I think so. Yeah. Oh, I like that. I like that. I never, I never knew that. I'll, uh, we'll have to inform. Um, Philip Schofield of that, I think. I was the ITV now. Anyway, whatever. Um, so yeah, in, in, uh, in the first thing we always talk about is what games we played this week. Um, I've just told you what I've played. Lou and Steve have nothing. So Patrick, take it away. Oh geez, like I've been playing a lot because like the the benefit of working full time on game development is that you can spend all your free time on making games. And the best part, and you know, that's only halfway through. The best part about it is that you can spend your working hours playing video games and call it research, and that's amazing. <laughs> so I'm I'm working on RPG. I'm working on RPGs. I've been obviously playing a lot of RPGs recently. I've I've got Fallout 2 from GOG. I got Fla Fa Fallout 3. Yeah. Fallout 2 yeah. is the isometric one, isn't it? The, yeah. Fallout I've, 1 I've... and 2 is the, is, are those the is isometric ones, the really old ones. I grabbed then... that um, a while back. I've got it, but I've got it in a zip file somewhere from GOG. I got it free a while back, and I just haven't yeah, played you, it you, you can You can still log in and get it back again. So, you know, that's that's pretty cool. Uh, I've been playing also Fallout 3 because... Uh, actually, like it all started because I found Fallout 3 in my Steam library somehow. So, apparently, I bought it up on one upon a time no idea when um so then i thought hey if i'm playing follow 3 i should probably play again Fallout 2 because i played it when i was like 15 last time so i played that yeah and so then i also found a new vegas so what? i'm essentially i'm playing three fallouts at the same time sort of like progressing right now i've only played fallout 3 i haven't played one and two i know they're isometric i don't know much more about them than that so give me the basic premise of the the mechanics Oh yeah, so the basic the, the, the basic pre me mechanics of Fallout 2 are very interesting because it's really old RPG. It's like before year 2000, I think it's, like, I think it's actually like 99 or 92 or even, even earlier, like it's a very old game. Uh, but the problem, with it, yeah, the problem with it is that the game design behind it is really horrible. Right. Like the, the game mechanics are so, can be so frustrating. Like, um, Combat is turn based, and I like like um, have you have any of you guys played Divinity Original Sin? Yeah, yeah. 
So I'm gonna compare Fallout 2 to Division, uh, Divinity Original Sin because the because they play the same. The combat is turn based, but the sort of exploration is in real time. So there is that. Um, right. And you have friendly fire and stuff like that. The thing about Divinity Original Sin is that probably you never noticed it, but if you, you if you swing your sword, you will almost always hit. Very rarely do you 100% miss. Hmm. Uh, whereas in Fallout 2, 34% chance to hit. And that's if you're combat orientated. Yeah. Good fucking luck. So the problem you follow too is that your initial combat is essentially I swing, I miss, enemy swings, enemy misses, and that's like 10 minutes of combat of <laughs> swinging and missing all the time. It's really freaking annoying. <laughs> and what's what's like the biggest salt in your wound is that you're fuck fighting an ant. Like, you are supposed to be the hero of your village. You cannot defeat a fucking ant. Welcome to Fallout. It's yeah. weird because I, I remember um, older uh, PC games were really harsh like that. I remember, um, I think I've mentioned it on the show before, but XCOM, um, you could have a 110% chance of hitting a miss. That, yeah. No, that, I don't, I don't, I can't get oh, along I'll with that. It, I'd have, I'd have I dumped the why. game. Oh, that's because, that's, the, that's because they don't show you like the actual percentages. It shows you your, your percentage to hit which is modified by enemy chance to dodge and miss, so they don't show yeah. you the final amount. Fallout, at least, is nice enough to show you, uh, to show you the real percentages. You can, so you, you can have 40, like, you can have, like, 50% to hit on your, on your character sheet, but when you mouse over your enemy, you can see that's actually, it's only 20, so good mm -hmm. luck. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so that's why you can, for example, you can spec into something for, like, 114%. So it's a full on, it's, it's a full -on yeah, RPG like like Fallout 3, yeah. you know, it's got that it's element in it. Yeah. So, so how, um, uh, as someone who's played the, the whole series, how do you compare Fallout 3 to 1 and 2? Do you think it's a, a worthy successor? Uh, so here's the thing, like when Fallout 3 came out, I was like, die hard no. I was like, what did they did with my beloved series? What the fuck? Why is it FPS? Why is it shooter? I'm an RPG fan, I will not play those 50 filthy shooters. I'm not some sort of, like, intellectual degenerate. So I didn't even touch it. So just recently I played it, and it's it's great. Like, Fall 3 is really, really great game. And New Vegas is even better. New right. Vegas yeah. is even better. So you played New Vegas at the same time as playing Fallout 3, because yes. I played I played a bit of New Vegas, but I, I just came off finishing and, like, 100% in as much as you can in those games. Fallout 3, so I was a little bit done with it you know i really yeah, want to yeah. go back to it because it really appeals to me and i've been told it's better than fallout 3 so yeah, i've been told that as well but I, I i've played it a few times now i've given it a few goals and i really can't get into it but i, I felt that fallout 3 delivered what oblivion didn't in the same sort of way well, it's based on the oblivion engine it was basically made by the similar uh, the same team i think as oblivion or a very similar team yeah um but it delivered in a way that oblivion really didn't so it was, for me, it wasn't really a Fallout uh, homage. It was more getting the RPG, the CRPG thing right this time on PC. I mm. think, like, I would say that uh, New Vegas is even more of an Oblivion uh, than... Uh, than Fallout 3, simply because of their faction, uh, like, faction, faction reputation, mm. uh, which was like, at least I'm not aware if it's if it's in Fallout 3, then I, I haven't yet encountered it. But it is, yeah. basically... Basically, um, what you it is in Fallout Three as yeah, well. It is, yeah. The, I, I killed some vampires by accident, not realizing <laughs> they were actually good guys. Yeah, and like I ended up pissing them all off, and they, yeah, they they came after me and yeah. didn't like me anymore. But, yeah. Yeah, but I don't, I don't think that <laughs> you have it actually listed. Whereas, um, like on like a scale and numerical value, yeah, I don't yeah. Think, but in Fallout New Vegas, you actually do have it like listed, like your and your game gonna tell you the reputation. So, um, it was, it was, um, was it Oblivion or was it Morrowind that had that you could have a list? There was a list of all the factions that you were in. I think it might have been Morrowind when I think about it. So I remember they Maybe. took it out, and I, I quite liked that. I think it'll be Morrowind, yeah. yeah. That's a shame because like you can really play off like different factions and stuff like that. So yeah, uh, but let's let's get back to actually like the the series and what you get if you play all of those games together. Um, for those who are not aware, we follow narrative. The narrative is that. The 80s never happened, and then World War happened. Like, I mean, the 80s never stopped, so we still live in 80s. I, I would then... love to live in that in that that environment. I hate <laughs> yeah. the 80s. I, mean, I, I know I was born then, but you like, know. <laughs> if you haven't realized, all of the cars in Fallout are atomic. Are atomic. Mm. There are. They have atom. They have like nuclear reactors. That's so fucking cool. But when they explode, everything gets irradiated. So that's not so cool. <laughs> but yeah. um. 
But yeah, so I imagine like Grand Theft Auto in Fallout World would be really, really bad. <laughs> like you try to make skirmish police, suddenly nuclear contamination in half of the city. You killed everyone. Good job. Hiroshima part two. <laughs> so yeah, um, but yeah. Um, so yeah, 80s never finished, and then you have this sort of like atomic wonder, and then World War Four, ha- World War Three happened, and everything w- went to shit. So actually, like it's really interesting how the the narrative of Fallout One is that you basically deal with the immediate post-war threats, like mutants, like you know the old war tech that's going highware, and you're essentially fighting with the consequences of the war. And the gaming is the game is very punishing, like even more than Fallout uh, Fallout Two. Fallout Two is a little bit more forgive, forgiving. I think it's like a little bit easier, and then it's more about people using the post-war shit to do bad things to each other. So you have like civilization slowly rising, but still being very savage. Fallout Three then introducing introduces like even more. You know, like, like it's really so. You know, the pro- and then you know, fight in f- f- combat mechanics. Fallout Three is actually like a lot better than Fallout Two, where you know that you actually have a chance if you're gonna shoot someone, you're gonna kill them and kill them. Like, yeah. you know, and then your skills are your skills are av- are affecting the vats. Well, so, we you were, know, the co- we were having we were having an argument uh, a few episodes back about about the vat system. Lou said that he really really likes I it. I did, yeah, I really really drew that uh, drew me. To, although I am a first person shooter player, I wanted to play that game in a turn based style with the vats. I didn't mind that, but I, I I preferred not to use it if I could get away with it. Unless it was like if I was if I had no health left or hardly any bullets or anything like that, then I'd use the vat system. But otherwise, I would always run around shooting people uh, as much as I could. I couldn't really I wish, get away I wish... with the vat system when I used uh, when I. Started playing Fallout Three. That's eventually why I stopped playing it. To be honest, yeah, really. You never yeah. completed it because the completed combat Fallout Three. Oh, it's a yeah, shame. I just, I just, I don't know. It just felt not counterintuitive, but it just felt a bit clunky. Fair enough. Like, Fair it just enough. felt it was, it was an effort to use it. If that makes sense. I'm- Hmm. I know maybe, maybe they fix it with patches because in the latest version is uh, I mean so, sometimes clicks don't register the way you would think they would register but hmm. basically before you commit it to, to action in VATS like you can review it and you can like even see all the percentages so I don't so I don't think there is a problem with VATS I know maybe maybe it was early version or maybe I'm yeah. more resilient to it so I think uh, I should probably uh, to give it justice I should go back and revisit it now because I did play it when it very first came out it did have a problem I know, I know what um, Patrick's saying about basically you try and click things and there wouldn't be where you thought there would be when you were clicking yeah. I didn't get so, that at yeah. all I, I think I played it on 360 first actually ah well you wouldn't have had that anyway because there's no mouse yeah, obviously like, yeah. I mean you can like in VATS you can use like the arrow controls as well mm. so. yeah but yeah, but you know, the combat is a lot easier, like you actually straight out of the gates, like you feel like badass, like you can kill bandits with your starting pistol, no problem, <laughs> try to do that in Fallout 2, you're gonna get killed so hard. So yeah, so it already feels like, it feels like humanity as a whole and you as a player is more powerful and the struggle with environment is a lot less. And then Fallout New Vegas, but you know, wildlife can still be very da- dangerous, and Fallout New Vegas as basically you moving everything, no problem. Like, it's a lot easier, at least at the start. Like, um, maybe like as you level up, it gets harder, but you know, the start is like, it's purely about politics, purely about the struggle between factions. Like there is like the California faction that tries to take over United States, but they're like the good guys, uh, but they, they put taxes on people, so people don't like them, but they also keep roads safe and everyone safe, so you know. And there is like this new Caesar Legion, so there's more struggle there. So it's really interesting how Fallout, as the series progresses, like the player feels more powerful because of the game mechanics, but also the the narrative is that the of the rising of the humanity, so like the parallel rise of power. So mm. it's that's really interesting for me, like yeah. how, yeah. how you it's sold it to me. I have to be honest. I, 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 it's been sat in a, in a drive on my NAS for years, and I start, just I haven't, I haven't even unzipped it yet. But maybe I should. Maybe I should give one and two a go. I mean, if you're gonna, if you really were gonna play Fallout 2, prepare for pain. <laughs> wow. And build build high intelligence character. Like basically, high intelligence, high agility character is easy mode in Fallout games. There's no chance I'd do that. I'm a I'm a strength and agility guy. You know, if I can choose it, I'm I'm I want to hit people with a big iron bar. That's basically what my <laughs> premise is in any RPG. Here is your problem. Your, ch- your chance to hit is not based on your strength. It's based on your uh, like melee combat. 
skill. Okay. And you get more skills on level up if you have more intelligence. The difference is that like I get like 25 skill points every level and one point is like two skills, two percentages and four percentages if I'm specced into that skill. So I have like 25 points every level. Whereas right. if you have low in intelligence, you get like nine. Right. Ah, I see. A, I see a big difference. So, yeah. so this is this is the so this is the thing. Like you can hit hard because I think your like, your melee damage is, <coughs> is like calculated by your strength. But it doesn't matter if you can hit them hard if you can never hit them. Yeah. No. You're right. You're right. Definitely. Because they're just gonna like kung fu style dodge you or something. <laughs> I know. Actually, like the animation is more like they're slightly drunk and they're just tips in family uh, cover like oh dodge. So um, what else have you played then? You've uh, uh, this um, well specifically in the last few weeks anyway. What, uh, what else have um, you been on with? I mean, we can really nicely tie into this idea of game mechanics and story narrative with the fact that I played Terra again. Um, Terra okay. Online. It's a uh, MMO. It's right. like a uh, Eastern. I mean, it's like Asian MMO. I mean, I, I don't know if it's been done by some Asian company, but it feels very Asian to it. Um, it's free to play with typical, you know, caveats and stuff like that. But what I notice is that, I mean, if you're gonna ask anyone who played Terra, they will never remember the, the story of it. I'm sort of like lore nerd that I always want to know the story and like actually the background of the world and the reason and the history because that's really interesting. The world building is interesting for me. So. If you would never play Terra, but just read about it like a book or something, and never see people fighting in Terra, you would think that it's a story of apocalypse. Because you have like your races, like all of the races in the world banded together in last effort of federation to fight off some abysmal, otherworldly invasion of whatever. Like, all of the armies are on other continents fighting for survival. The home front is failing as well because there is no warriors in home to defend homeland. Villages are being burned. People are being raped, turned into vampires or demons. Oh my god, shit is fucked. If you look at the monsters, like, the monsters are eldritch abominations. Like, the design is genuinely just, scary. I've just put a link yeah. into chat. If you click on that and then scroll down and look at the papori. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's the weirdest looking creature I've seen in any MMO so, in my life. Yeah, I'm, so I'm good at Terra I, mean, I, 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 I can, I can one up you. I can one up you because I'm playing Alien in this in this apocalyptic world world of like horror and disgust. I'm playing Alien, and aliens are ten year old girls. Aliens, oh right, them right. Aliens. There are like yeah. little ten year old girls, and the? they're not even. They're not even walking. They're skipping about. That is, def shit, you know, <laughs> that is definitely. That is definitely. That's definitely Asian. As I walk through. Yeah. As I walk through battlefield of death and destruction, I'm skipping <laughs> about like Red Riding Hood, to, like having a huge fucking battle axe behind you, me, just dragging it. But I'm skipping about. But you can I'm you like, can swim really fast though. Yeah, I can swim really fast. I mean, I, I'm, not, I'm gonna be honest. I choose Tanya Olga because she's fucking adorable. But if I, like, if I would ever Let, have a daughter... Let's, um, let's stop like, right about there, just in case this gets a, a little bit... Uh... Uh, I mean, I've got to say, I, I Google image search shit. I'm just getting loads of scantily clad elves, basically. Oh, I haven't, I haven't, I haven't done that. Thing. Like, if I would want to play female of any other race, I'm basically playing a hooker. So there is that. Yeah. I, I can either play... A guy, which, you know, I'm gonna play this character for a really fucking long time and staring under ass. I don't want to stare at male ass. As good of an ass it is, not into that. So I can either play a hooker or I can play <laughs> cute little girl. Mm, I mean... Hooker versus girl <laughs> versus fox. But here's the, so, so here's the thing. Yeah, I mean, like, he's, she's a fox girl. I mean, she's a little girl. She's definitely no, no, I meant, underage. I meant the Let's not go things. there. <laughs> Yeah. Fox so um, things. yeah. So you know, so the, the so uh, in, in, in pastel dress, not even in armor. It's like literally summer pastel dress. It's like, oh my god, cuteness overload, overload. <laughs> and I'm slaying dragons by thousands. Like I'm a machine of death and destruction, and I'm mowing every thread without an effort whatsoever. So it's really hard for me to feel the doom and gloom and this politics and treachery because if I can see like the guy who's like, I, I, I'm dying, the home front is lost, you need to save everyone and the cast and ends and I'm just, 
Yay! <laughs> Tornado of Distraction! Well, that was... Killing everything! They, they always have some kind of little cute schoolgirl in Japanese yeah. or, or Asian things, yeah. don't they, at some point. But got, I, I didn't realise there was a, a game with an entire race of of schoolgirls, Girl. <laughs> basically. It's not school, it's press, it's literally press school girls. <laughs> like, you cannot, even if you would have a fetish, you cannot take it, like, you cannot take it even seriously, because it just feels morally wrong. Like, <laughs> you can, you can be parental figure for this girl, but certainly not anything else. Yeah. <laughs> right, so, let's move on, quickly, before we, uh, yeah. we... <laughs> Go, yeah. Before Lou's cat gets gets involved. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm heard, I heard that you're like your UK porn laws just got really, really bad. So yeah. yeah, you should probably watch. Out. Probably like the links from. Probably you're not, links even, from, you're like, not even allowed to sit on people's faces anymore. Me and Lou are well yeah. pissed off about that. Jeez, yeah, that, that sucks. <laughs> I it. mean, you know, like probably even like screenshots from Terra Online are illegal in the UK. Because yeah. it's too much porn to handle. We're, we're pretty, handle. we're pretty timid over here at the end of the day, especially considering uh, some European stuff that's uh, that's <laughs> gone around over the years. Um, so, are, are, have you played anything else then this week? Or have you? Is that? I mean, do, do we have time to talk about anything well, else? Well, let's not go into too much. You talked about yeah, uh, <laughs> your <laughs> original sin. Um, yeah, the original sin is the greatest RPG of past ten years. I got to disagree there. I didn't get on with it. I mean, I didn't I've, either. I quite like RPGs, but I'm 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 into my Skyrims. I'm into my uh, I'm into my my kind of ones that I can f I can create a character and then create the you know exactly what type of character I want to create while playing the game, rather than having to spec it up at the beginning and then just build those those skills up. Um, you say that, but you like Final Fantasy VII. I do, but that's that's different. That's that's the story really for that, and it, and there's only Final Fantasy VII really that I enjoy out of the Final Fantasy series. Divinity seemed to be sold on its story, on it, on its interaction between the two main characters, and uh, yeah. I, mean, I, mean, I wouldn't say the story. I feel like the turn-based combat is really great, and then just the vastness uh, of the world, and the, like the approach that you can get to, ex like it really tickles the exploratory sort of thing, like right. you know, finding all the really. Different you know what it felt like? Things. It felt like it felt like an elaborate, um, like dungeon siege or. Uh, what was that game we were playing recently? It's, it's Diablo. That's it. Diablo. <laughs> yeah, it feels like a, an elaborate Diablo to me. Yeah, but, but the combat is combat is totally different. Oh, totally different. I mean, I don't like the combat in Diablo at all. I actually prefer and then you can, you, combat. You can, you can talk a lot with people and solve a lot of problems by just talking and go walking around and find a lot of different. But I mean, in. I understand why Divinity: Original Sin has become popular because it is it is very immersive. Someone uh, Purple Fire Four and Chats just said the same thing. You just said immersion is key, and it is at the end of the day. It's. Um, that's what makes an RPG, and we, we've talked about RPG. We've had whole whole shows on RPG I like, before. No, I think like to be fair, the reason that Divinity Original Sin is, I mean, it it is good game. But if you would want to find other reason why it sold well, probably because it's good turn based. Like it's the best turn based RPG that we had since like year two thousand four. It's also very and, configurable as well, isn't it? Yeah, because there was no turn based RPGs in the recent. I mean, you mentioned. Uh, the Elder Scrolls, that's that's first person, not ten, real time. That's not turn based. See, I, I like that. I like. Well, yeah, I, 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 I don't mind turn based games, but I I prefer the freedom and the combat in, in that. Nothing nothing wrong with that. But there are people who really like turn based gaming and approach of this, like you know, very analytical. And Divinity Original Sin really tickles this thing. Like one of the best examples is one of the encounters that I had in the wild with some fire elementals. My first encounter, and you know, Divinity really teaches you to like just save every time like basically you basically divinity original like my preparation is like working in old school photoshop that crashed every 10 minutes prepared me to play in divinity original scene because my god you need to save a lot <laughs> so like i'm just like pressing a five every now and then because you never know when you're gonna die but yeah the encounter was as follows like i'm i'm facing those elementals my typical approaches i mean i know i'm not gonna use fire based spells because they're gonna wreck me hard like fire heals them, um, but even though like I knew what I'm getting myself into a bit, I got thrashed. Like not even I killed a sig. Not I even found it very very them. difficult when I played it. I, I ended yeah. up um, I went on I was just following the normal quest, the, the the main quest, and I went into a dungeon. I think two two or three skeletons spawned, and there was a wizard or there was some kind of sorcerer or something. I just got owned, and I yeah. I mean I wasn't 
I had a melee guy, which I thought, keep the melee guy away from the mage, like you normally do, you know, in all... Sorry, keep the melee guy at full front, keep them away from the mage. Mage casting spells to... to... No, just, you, just got hit, destroyed. Have you hit fireball on your guy, by any chance? Uh, I because don't there think is I did. There is friendly fire in that game, really hard. Mm, I think I, I did so, find out the hard way of that, but I didn't. I, I didn't. No, I didn't do that. It's, it's a while yeah. since I played. I, I bought it the, the week it came out. Um, it's an indie game, isn't it? It's actually from an yeah. indie developer. It was on Kickstarter. Yeah, and I think I think they've done a, an excellent job with it. I think it's very very good, but it's just not my cup of tea. Or rather, I've got other th other games that I'd rather play. You know, I I I think the immersion's brilliant, but it's it's the fact that I don't have the time to invest in it at the moment. That's the great thing, like the, the, the great thing about video games, is that you can find your you can fi find your cup of tea, and there's no problem without it. So mm. you know, it's great. Like it's a good game. It's not for you, not a problem. Mm. There are other games for you. And then, as I, but as I said, like there were not a lot of turn-based tactical games in a long time. Like the latest I can remember was like uh, Neverwinter Nights 2, which oh, was like Jesus. 2004 or 2005. That was one and of the first games that, I played that could span over multiple monitors as well. It was absolutely yeah. crazy when I figured that out, but it was so slow back then. And yeah, and then there is and there is nothing else. So, you know, but but you know, back to this encounter. So, you know, the first totally trashed, saving, preparing like off the battleground, like spawning appropriate fields, and you know, very tactical approach kill them without even getting damage yep. that's the difference that you can make like you can get absolutely owned but if you do it right you can just trash the enemy like there is no tomorrow so that's what i really like it really rewards really smart play uh, playing and then, you know the other thing is that you know my first eight hours of the game was literally replaying tutorial because i was, I was just reloading characters and trying to find the most broken shit i can do and you know <laughs> how can i break this game to find like the most OP thing ever. That's uh, what that's what get that's what lose into basically yeah, breaking that's, games. That's right. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, and lo and behold, like I made a party which is like unkillable, and it's so rich I can buy villages. <laughs> nice. <laughs> it's like something Steve would do that. Right. Yeah, so, so I. So, you know, that's, that's the I think we should move on to uh, to our next section. We can. I said I'm sure you can. You've got plenty of other games that we could talk about, but we're. Uh, with, uh, we'll move on to our our next section, which is the way of the exploding list. That Lou, 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 Lou does the yeah awesome sound effects for. <laughs> um, so this section, what we do is we we someone springs a list on us, whether it's someone from chat. If anyone in chat has an idea while I'm rambling on, and you guys catch up, please let us know. Um, and it's something like your favourite protagonist or your worst sidekick. We had we had worst sidekick last week. I think it was, was it? Was it Lou? It was, yeah. And we struggled a little bit with that one, but it was a good one. But so has, have, have any of you got any any ideas? I've got one <coughs> more on my list at the moment. Go on, let's expend your list. All right. Favorite lists in games? Favorite no, lists? No, that was that was a lie. Look her off. Ah. Uh, uh, my my a... last one, which is a bit a bit like last week's, I have to be honest with you, but um it's most hated protagonists. Cuz we talked about sidekicks last week. But what about your protagonists that you hate? Oh, did we not oh, do we've that? Done that? We've, we've done, done that. We've done it. Last time, yeah, because oh. I, did, I did Duke Nukem. Yeah, you're right. And I've, I've, I haven't got anything else on my list then. Sorry. <clears throat> uh, what about, like, most beautiful environments from video games? Oh. Good one. Good one. Ooh. Well, I, you know what? And and shall we shall we say this relative to the time as well? So, cause yes, it has to be. We, yeah, it's going to have to be. Because, I, I mean, I immediately, as soon as you said that, for... Um, Far Cry, the original Far Cry, popped into my head. Yeah. Because at the See, time, I, I, that blew I would go, me away. I, I would go another way. I would say Dark uh, Dark Siders too. Because I've like not the, seen it. something that really strange, like the, the the game is not like hyper realistic, which is great. Like it's well styled. Like it's it's a good 3D art, which is like really nicely stylized, so it will not age bad. Because the problem with realistic games, like if you remember Operation Flashpoint from back in the day, when it came back, photorealistic. Now when I look at the screenshots, oh my god, face are having polygons, literally. <laughs> so, and I thought that it was photorealistic. But, uh, but it has like really nice, it was one of the very few games that just made me stop in the middle of gameplay, just look around in A, and my god, the design, just the very design, it's everything scaled. What was that, sorry, the, the last one you said? 
Darksiders uh, 2. Oh, you're still talking Dark about Darksiders. Sorry, I thought you said another game while I was... Uh, I'm gonna say... I was smoking Operation Flashpoint. <laughs> oh. I'm, yeah. I'm going to say there's, there's two games I want to say. One of them is the, the original Unreal, because no one had seen anything like that when I came out. Yeah. That was an utterly beautiful game. Original um, Unreal? Unreal. Unreal. <laughs> uh, Unreal. <laughs> Unreal. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, oh, yeah. And the other one is, is World of Warcraft when that first came out because that was oh, unbelievably yeah. beautiful. Uh, and not only that, but unlike a lot of games where there's kind of a continuous rolling green hills thing to it, like Oblivion, for instance, this had very distinctive areas. Like you, you'd wander into a new area and it would have its own color scheme and its own foliage and just like the, the way that the buildings were designed, everything. It was really beautiful. It was a gorgeous game to explore and I remember I got hold of a beta of the game um, that wasn't massively multiplayer you could just walk around it on your own in the World of Warcraft world and I just spent hours just walking around it was just unbelievably beautiful yeah. mm. so that's, that's a, that's a favourite of mine I can think of lots of games that have this, got uh, nice environments but yeah but it's trying to pick like a favourite or one that stands out from them I'm trying so to I think, think of I'm trying to think of that moment, you know, when you go into you, you yeah. go into a game and you actually spend time staring at something in the game, or you stand. Oh, that just made me think. There was something I remember going up to the edge of a cliff and just looking out at the scenery out, and it was like all it was was a backdrop. It was a skybox with a few models in front of it, but it was amazing. I can't. Wasn't Halo? Was it? Because I did that you know in Halo. I've got a screenshot of it somewhere. I it was, was that beautiful. I was going to say Halo, the first time when you crash land on Halo and you go out and you can see the bloom, uh, yeah. bloom through the trees and you see the, uh, the Halo arc in the distance. Yeah, yeah. That, that, was, that was very impressive for the time. Um, what was that level, Lou, uh, on a real tournament um, where you had the, um, the planets moving around over the, uh, the skybox? Um, really, really close up. Face, facing worlds, was it? Facing was it worlds, yeah. Yeah, with the two, the two um, towers yeah. on either end, the sniper fest. Yeah, that that was a really beautiful map. That, Very that impressive was a pretty for the map, time yeah. as well. Uh, there was a Just lot the of quality of the textures and the uh, the planets. Uh, I found mm. that amazing at the time. Mm. I think it might have been World of Warcraft. You know, now I'm thinking of it. Like you said, like you said, I think it might have been the. First time I remember walking out onto a, a, a vista and just looking out and just thinking, "Wow, that that much scenery! You know, there's that much in this world, and that, and I can go and explore it all." That, you know, that was one of the things that. But it doesn't. It's not a particularly beautiful looking game though. So maybe I it was Skyrim. They... Maybe because I, I remember being on a horse. I remember that would be Skyrim. But you could also be on horses in. But by then, I'd, I, I was like level 40 Olivia or something. Wasn't it wasn't a very pretty game. Skyrim is a very pretty game. But Skyrim is enhanced by things like EMB, EMB, uh, modern stuff like that. Mm. But um, yeah, in terms of like raw beauty, I think Unreal has it for me. I think the first time I walked out of the ship into the big canyon. Um, it's just... It, I've got, like, goosebumps thinking about it now. It's <laughs> so, It was so beautiful. Hmm. There's, a, there's another game that just popped in my head, but it disappeared as you were talking then. Aww. So many, so many games with so much beautiful scenery. I mean, th th apparently The Order 1886 is a very, very beautiful looking game. Well, yeah, so's Far Cry 4, but so, it's a terrible game. But so's it's Thief as well, the new Thief. That looks nice, in, in my eyes. It's a very pretty looking game, but, you know. Oh, how about, what about Final Fantasy VIII? When that happened? I remember that. I remember. It was... No, I, I wouldn't say that was a beautiful, but I, I'm thinking of things that kind of awestruck me, like where you walk into a, a giant room or a giant location and you're looking around, it's just like screw the game for five minutes let's just look at this hmm. yeah like co coming back to the world of warcraft example like um the coming out of the dwarven starting zone when you have yes. those giant the, those giant monuments of dwarves like holy shit and then this dam later on like that yeah zombie, the like, dam you, you just uh, you just st stand and like just look at the scale the the scale on the environment you know i can get there mm. <sighs> yeah I did like that. Uh, pretty much, you can look at a World of Warcraft location from any angle at any time of day, and it's going to look beautiful. I think the the design in that game, despite the fact they were limited by the polygons and the technology they could use, it just is a very good looking game. Even when it first came out, it was a very very beautifully designed game, hmm. and that's the key. It was designed well. It wasn't just hardware. It wasn't just 
Yeah, it wasn't just like it's got a really high poly count or whatever. It no, no, was it's typically low poly though. Isn't artistically it? beautiful. Yeah, like oh. that's that's the thing. Like that's why I mentioned the Dark Siders because Dark Siders, Dark Dark Siders two one was pretty meh, but two was really great because it's not about and that's something they can really talk about on hours and hours as an artist because it's not about the quality of the asset, which is you know obviously that's important. But more important is the design behind it because mm. you can make you can save so much on polygons and just you can make your game ru run better if your artist is really smart about design and how to approach it and how to make striking you know low poly assets because you know everyone can make like thousands of like you know little tiny uh, details and sculptures and it's gonna look nice and stuff <laughs> like that. But if it like if you overdo it, it looks like basically it's like Asian problem. I, I call it actually like Jap I call it Japanese problem because a lot of like Japanese designs like in Mecha, in the the newer ones, they're like over design. There is just too much stuff there. It's too busy and it's hard to see the beauty of it. Like it looks nice in still frames. Like if you're gonna take a screenshot with all those like shiny pieces and specular lighting and different things. But if it's moving in combat. No way in hell you're gonna <laughs> fucking notice that. Well, I'll tell you, there's there's um there's two games uh, that I know Sam would would add into this list. I've just had a quick Google because I was like, there's got to be some classic, beautiful games. <laughs> um, one of them is Shadow of the Colossus, and I know Sam would be would probably have that up there in his because it doesn't just have the <clears throat> the beautiful kind of landscapes. It's just huge open landscapes with not much in them, but the way that the game was stylized was beautiful. Um, but also the the fact that it it made you feel as well that game again we've we've talked about how how the the emotion in that game is very uh, very important and also the first uncharted when that came out that that was a hitter that was a beautiful looking game when that came out there was a lot of a lot of hype around it but at the same time it was very cinematic very kind of together you know as a as a it, it felt real now i I'd, I'd probably throw in there something like uh, metal gear solid 4 as well because I yeah, actually, I because do you think, because I, I would, but I do think that feels. <coughs> and I, I, I've got a feeling that Phantom Pain is also going to be very, very beautiful um, in in terms of looks. But no, Metal Gear Solid Four had that. It was it was all fairly closed areas, but everything was very high detail. You know, mm. I believe a lot of the cutscenes were real time as well, and they, yet they didn't look like it. I think there were a lot of them were in game footage. Uh, Half Life Two, Half Life Two, definitely. That was one of the first games moments. I remember seeing where um, where the sunlight actually looked realistic when it was cast on the uh, yeah the water looks environment. I can't think of a game which has more realistic water than Half Life Two. <laughs> Even now, yeah. Even now, I can't. I've not seen a game that's matched Half Life Two's realistic water. Another ga another game actually, uh, Akami. That is a beautiful oh, looking yeah. game. That is that art was... at its best. That is a game that, that is was... art. Yeah, that was a miracle of just, you know, artistic expression. Yeah. Like, if if someone wants to make, like, artistic games, that's how you make artistic may game, not David Cage style. <laughs> What's yeah, the name yeah. of it, oh, sorry? Okami. O-K-A-M-I. It's, uh, it's that one with the dog, uh, which is the... Uh, Akami is a... Yeah, well, wolf, yes. sorry, yeah. And it was... Um, the, uh, Akami's a god, goddess, yeah, and she was running around painting Cell the world shaded. or whatever. Cell yeah. Well, yeah. Oh, talking about cell shaded what about Borderlands in terms of style good looking but I wouldn't say beautiful but where the like, environments were like, really great like it didn't really move me it's like desert and yeah. really oh, yeah. okay. Borderlands had some really cool things like the uh, crystal caverns which was an optional area uh, caustic mm -hmm. caverns sorry the crystal caverns that's a sonic map isn't it sonic the hedgehog sonic, sonic cd original sonic the hedgehog I think oh, Sonic CD. I Sonic, suppose yeah. I suppose Sonic did it did win the 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 Lux battle when it came to Nintendo versus Sega, didn't it? Mm. Always, always won that. And I think even when I was younger, even though I was a Nintendo kid, I was always on the side of Sonic for for the graphics. With inferior hardware, far inferior hardware, the, you, the, the SNES was capable of so much more than the the Mega Drive. Hmm. Right. Yeah, anyway. So. That I was think, a really uh, good list thing. Yeah, one, 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 one last one. What do you think about the journey? I've not played that. I've, I've not seen it. it. But, uh, yeah, I've seen it. So it's yeah, a neither nice did I because thing. it went on consoles. Like, it's not on the proper hardware. How can I play it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, I've read a lot about it and I saw screenshots. It looks really nice. It does, yeah. 
attention to de- detail with that one, the way that you've got like footsteps in the sand and things like that, and it, it all the it's sand moves. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. Okay, so let's move on to the uh, to the gaming news. Um, we've got quite a lot this week, and this is where we start talking a bit more about game development. There's a few other gaming gaming news articles we'll we'll talk through first. There's a few that we missed last week because Lou and I uh, I's internet exploded, so we um, we missed two topics. One was we just started talking about it, which was the Nvidia um, nine seventy lawsuit that was raised. I don't know where that's up to at the moment. I don't know if it's continued or not, but there was uh, problems with the Nvidia. 970 was advertised as having four gig of ram in it but it actually only had three and a half gig of ram and the last 500 meg was accessed via a different bus essentially on the on the card yeah it's just basically shitty yeah Yeah. and basically if you if you used a game uh, mainly things with high resolutions you know high resolution textures that kind of thing if you if you played a game that used more than three and a half gig it just destroyed your computer you couldn't you couldn't play it yeah, um, because the speeds were like 10 times slower on that bus if I remember correctly like it was bad something but utterly you know, ridiculous but you know what's worse like even with those three and a half gigs it's still one of the best graphic cards on the market for the bug so right, like, that's the problem like I was sort of wishing oh my god they have controversy maybe it's gonna be cheaper maybe I can buy it for cheaper no fucking way people still buy it because it's still good despite even that yeah <sighs> Uh, there, was, there was some other things as well that they falsely advertised, and I'm just uh, having a quick read to see which one it was. But there's some other, some other stuff. It doesn't have the 64 render outputs that it's uh, it's supposed to have. It doesn't have the two two meg of L2 cache. It doesn't uh, increase your penis size, which it, uh, mine definitely said it did. Yeah, it doesn't let you doesn't let you marry a supermodel or anything like that. Moving on to supermodel related stuff uh, <laughs> and game related stuff. These that well, we're going to cover a few um, topics this week that we don't we normally steer clear of um, because we don't particularly want to get into all the controversial stuff, you know, the Gamergate stuff and uh, you know the uh, women in video games and that kind of thing. However, we are going to talk about two things. One was I read an article which was a very informed article on co- on, on co- how do you say it? Kotaku. 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 Yeah. God, you think I should know that by now? But um, it was a, it was an article on breast physics, and now you, you might you might have a chuckle about that, but it is a big thing when it comes to game development because obviously Two it's controversial. <laughs> See, this is why we don't talk about this stuff because <laughs> you, you're all children. Um, anyway, breast physics basically they're notoriously difficult to um, to, to animate in games, mainly because you have to use bones in order to to <laughs> connect the breast to the main body. I mean, I can make better illustration. Like, if you what? make a skeleton... Well, no, 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 like, Chris, Chris, you're, you're doing this wrong. Like, here is the thing. If you're doing a skeleton, like, yes, skeleton is made for bones. Do you know how bones for breasts look like? It's yeah. literally something like that. Right, right, so, yeah. you know, you need, to, you need to animate that in-game. Like, good luck with that. Chris po- uses bones to make breast move. That, I, that's all I needed to hear. I don't. I don't. I haven't tried it yet. But that's my point. Is is that the article that I read was actually really informed. It was written by a, a woman. So it was. But but normally when you read articles, in my experience, that have been written by women journalists or been written by feminists or something like that, it's usually quite scathing. But this article in particular, which I've pasted in a chat. I found really informative and really interesting because it took quite a lot of different opinions, quite a lot of different um, ways of doing things and explained why it's difficult and explained why it's offensive as well to some women. I mean, personally, to me, it doesn't matter. I I mean, for God's sake, have you seen that game Mount Your Friends? You see, they're, they're, it's, it's that one. It's one of them co-op type games where you have to basically, um, if you've got a control pad, you use all four buttons and you have to kind of use, use um, like, attach your, your hands to people and like build a tower of yourself but all of the characters are all male from i think i think they're all male and they've all got basically the the, the penises the cocks are wa- like waggling around while you're doing it because the they're not, it's not naked but they're inside pants but it's just it's could it's be taken penis as, physics it, it's dong but it's physics yeah. it, dong physics it's called <laughs> but it's dong utterly physics, ridiculous yeah. i mean it is I'm gonna, I'm great just it's rotating around it's ridiculous it's basically do- dead of al- dead or alive version of dong physics which is like <laughs> it's great it's glorious i say more of it like guys to be fair i want a fighting game with like shirtless guys just in pants 
with like ridiculously huge bulge in their like crotch place <laughs> that is just wobbling about as they move. Like I just want, you know, now, because upload... that's what happens in the 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 life of boobs. So I want the same thing with dog with dogs. Equal opportunities for everyone. Some people are turned on by wobbling boobs. Some people are turning on turned on by wobbling dongs. Someone, Nothing so, wrong about it. Someone in chat has just it. has just basically described um, mount your friends a lot better than I can. It's men in speedos climbing each other. <laughs> not sexual <laughs> at all. Perfect. The thing is, the thing about the oh, thing is, the you say that. <laughs> the thing about breast physics is that you know uh, they don't. <laughs> In real life, they don't move around as much as they do in games. I think if it if they're depends. doing if they're moving games, then they do it noticeably. Well, here's the thing: like not it necessarily depends on, the, depends on the breast themselves, depends on the woman, and depends on the type of bra she's having, and depends on the type of clothing. Hmm. Like, I actually read a lot about it because, well, I have to draw it, so I have yeah. to know. So I probably know more more types of bre of like breast holders or whatever they call bras all of you guys my friend yeah I like <laughs> breast holders better thank you very much uh, than all of you guys combined because I just have to know this shit but the thing and is if you, watch, if you watch a movie or a TV show then how often do you notice breasts moving really I don't no, because they usually yeah. they usually supported by a bra or some exactly. sort. Exactly. So why? The, 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 wait, wait, no, I I can see it. I can see it in like those really bad commercials about like running or like problems with running when there is women in really bad, definitely not a sport bra, trying to run and like she's having troubles. And I know that's actually a real problem because I have a few friends who have like really large breasts and she, they're, they're like, no, we just cannot run or cannot run without like really, really, you know, uncomfortable bras because they're essentially squeezing your chest. So but yeah, I think that the, the point was is that there's, there's obviously the games like Dead or Alive where it is all about <coughs> breast physics. So, sorry, it's all yeah. about the breasts bouncing around and them wearing like a strip of metal in front of the the nipple, you know, in order to and and they don't they Protect don't ever nipples. well no in, in, and they don't fly out while they're jumping and doing crazy backflips and stuff. The the point of this article was that it, it went into all that detail and that's kind of what I wanted to bring up is the fact that. Not often do you, you usually see the people complaining about it or just being stupid about it, you know, just being immature about it, essentially, because, you know, a lot of gamers tend to not think about this as a, a serious subject. Because it's, I mean, I mean you know, the Dead or Alive is not serious. No, like, no, Dead or Alive it's isn't. Impossible. But yeah. you also look at, um, there's, a, there's an example in that article of, um, is it Jill from, uh, I'm from looking at the, I'm Resident, looking at the Resident Evil. Evil? Yeah, I'm looking at the Resident Evil um, ping pong uh, gif, and they are moving way too much. Yeah, they're, they're, they're not they're not realistic, but they're not they're over not. the top either. But they're just not realistic. But they how old be is moving, that game though. now? In that context, it should not. Well, that's that's well, what well, we should, but it should be more rigid. I think that's the point, I isn't mean, it? It's. I I mean, guys, what are you laughing at? What's wrong with people? Can, can men not talk about breasts without without laughing about it? <laughs> no. <laughs> guys, anyway, guys, I think like that the basic problem is that. The problem is that there is, there's just one way or the other. There's either not moving breasts at all, which are like not realistic at all, or you just have something which, you know, devs are trying to do something and it adds up either intentionally or not intentionally. It, uh, it ends up like over the top sexualization that, that not even the most devious of sexual deviants could take seriously and masturbate to. Hmm. That's the problem. Uh, except teenage boys, because teenage boys can pretty much masturbate to anything. Yeah, I've had, um, I've had teenage. No, no. The problem is that there is no. <laughs> the, the problem is that there is no realistic portrayal. That but then the other problem is that the actual realistic portrayal is really hard. So you know. No, I, I get that, and that's the thing. It it is difficult to to do it, but it's also difficult to do dong physics. It's also difficult to do lots of things in computer games. I mean, the amount of things that I'm in my game, I'm having to try and figure out how to do. I, I'm a novice when it comes to it, but the people who are more experienced that should have kind of the resources and the, the time to be able to put into it now. The article goes in to explain that people should have time, but they don't see it as valuable. Yeah. And the fact that is the problem. It's a problem that the people who are making the games are not seeing it as a valuable thing to spend time and money on. Whereas I mean, it we, offends we just, we just, some people yeah. or some demographics. We, we, we just go. We just go back to the problem of like Assassin's Creed having not enough founts to make female version of the character, right? Yeah. Remember that, like the excuse well, yeah. of the, the excuse for the by the 
who made that guy Activision? No, 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 Activision. Because Ubisoft. I saw that. Yeah, the, the Ubisoft themselves. excuse. Ubisoft excuse was literally we don't have enough funds to make female version of the character, which is totally bollocks because totally they bollocks. sleep on money. Money. If they would say that it doesn't fit their artistic vision, I would be totally fine with it. Like in our universe, like there are no female assassins, and I'm like, well, okay. But they said, yeah, we would totally want to, but it's not. We don't have enough money, which is, you know. Yeah, bollocks. it's a lot of shite. Uh, that that was that oh, yeah. was one executive making the uh, the, the wrong uh, statement I think though, at that time wasn't it the wrong kind of st he should have thought yeah. about it a little bit more maybe had a spin doctor for it I think um, yeah. we, we might as well move on to another uh, subject that's related to this um, again this is a little bit controversial in that we don't normally talk about about this but um, you, have you all heard of Anita Sarkeesian? Yep. Uh, I've heard the name. So last week I think it was Thursday last week she she went to a uh, a t she did a talk at NYU, which is uh, it's New York University or whatever this stands for. It's some university somewhere. But this particular, this particular, she 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 talks. She basically does a, a podcast or a, a show called uh, Feminist Frequency, and it's talking about women in video games. Now, she's had lots and lots and lots of death threats and lots of issue, you know, thing things coming around it. But the talk again was a very informed talk, and it actually made a, a lot more kind of an impact than, than a lot of her previous stuff has, has. and she's tried to convert the people who are uh, kind of sitting on the fence with the issue. You've heard of Gamergate, haven't you? You've heard of the the term, at least, if you don't know what it is. Do, do you all kind of get that? I don't, I, as, far, it, yeah. as far as I'm yeah. concerned, it's basically, it started off as, um, from my understanding at least, and bearing in mind that I don't keep up to date with it, I'm not a Gamergator and I have no real interest in it, uh, it started off as uh, it's a, a girl called Zoe Quinn got, um, she created a, a game called Depression Quest, and then uh, was it something to do with a boyfriend said, like, started really yeah. slagging her off Chris, online Chris, and being Chris, nasty. Chris let, let, Chris, let me simplify. I mean, you never should simplify this sort of stuff because there's always a lot of nuance, but this was actually pretty simple. It started as slut shaming. Like, it started basically, people were shaming a human being for having sexual relationship with other people. And I think that's abysmal, frankly. Yeah, and yeah. they tried uh, they tried to spin it as, in, yeah, it's like the question of inter integrity of the journalist, but the journalist that she had well, relation with, yeah. it was not like, he didn't write a review about it, it was like after he, after someone wrote the review, so it wasn't even connected. So that but was now it's turned thing. into this whole, basically, gamers against journal games journalism, and it's yeah. gone absolutely crazy. Anyway, that's. I'm not going to go into that. We're not going to. I'm not going to give any yeah, there particular is like opinions about it. multiple different fronts, and everyone tries to spin it their own way. Frankly, it's a. It's like a one giant stage for trolls to troll each other it and is, do, exactly. do horrible things to yeah. people. But this uh, this NYU talk that she did, um, I I've kind of been sitting on the fence with Anita Sarkeesian since I first heard about her and started watching her videos because a lot of the things she puts in her videos aren't aren't particularly informed when it comes to gaming, but then a lot of other things are very very informed and she's she's kind of raising relevant issues um one of the things that i i think is pretty relevant from this i'm not going to talk about the talk or anything because she does a much better job than i can but they had to have extra security at the venue and they never have security there for anything like they, they, they never have guards they never have metal detectors which they had to have for this <laughs> yeah and i think it's it's it atrocious like that it looked like prison. <laughs> yeah, it's atrocious that that kind of thing even needs to happen. You know, I, yeah. I, I, regardless of what of what your opinion of Anita, uh, uh, Anita Sarkeesian is, it's that, it, that this is a, it's something that exists that people actually might want to hurt her for it for having an opinion. It, it's crazy to me. Yeah, I mean, I mean, like it's just like it's it's very video gamey thing because you get a bunch of teenagers who are on. On the internet, and you know, teenagers who are like most teenagers are inherently mentally unstable because all of the fucking hormones, and they're gonna say really retarded shit. And you know, still gaming is mostly, I mean, it is now, it's like young adults and all that. Actually, like the, the, the gaming demographic nowadays is like 30 years old, yeah, but yeah. that doesn't change the fact that there's a lot of teenagers, and teenagers are the most vocal, so that's what ends up happening. And you're gonna have a couple of mentally retarded people. Like the problem, like you remember the guy who did like small change to sniper rifle in Call of Duty, and his family, his family got death threats 
because he nerfed sniper rifle by like 0 0.4 <laughs> I, seconds. I didn't know about that, but I can believe it. Like the guy, the guy had to relocate for a couple of nights. Like actually, like the SWAT. I'm not SWAT team, but it, because it was America. Like the police force moved his family to hotel for a couple of days because he got like very precise death threats. Like mm -hmm. that, as in like his wife's work schedule or something like that. This sort of like really, like no. it's not normal, but. It isn't. I, yes. I appreciate people get passionate about their hobbies and their interests, but I mean, at the end of the day, come on, come on, yeah, honestly, it's like, it shouldn't be happening. It shouldn't be happening. It's, it's atrocious. One other thing I just wanted to raise about that before we move on to another subject is um, one of the points that she made in a talk was that it's not necessarily. She, she she talks basically about how women are portrayed in computer games and that you can't play women in every computer game or in the vast majority of computer games that that the. Um, that the industry is run by men basically and, and men make the decisions when it comes comes down to this and and it's it's more of a thought process it's a case of let's look at um, she, she takes destiny as an example right destiny you can play women you can play men when you uh, when you play as either nothing's different there's no there's no change which is as it should be you've got the same skills you can level up the same way you can use the weapons in the same way but it's things like the the vocals the fact that when you when you jump up and down or you get hit, it's a bit sexualized uh, when it's a woman. Yeah, uh, 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 and it doesn't need to be like that. It, it, she, it, yeah. it could be actual, you know, women grunts, yeah. or, you know, a grunt like a, a man yeah. would get. But you could also look at it from the other side, and you could also say that men, you know, the the, the men that are portrayed in these films are, in these games are quite um, overly macho, you know, at the same time. Yeah, but there's also one other thing yeah, that she the, points the, out. The, yeah, the difference the is between like the power fantasy and the uh, empowerment fantasy, essentially, and the uh, sexual object fantasy. Uh, and then you know, and here's when you're running into problems because uh, some women like to look nicely and be sexual, and that's their power but fantasy. But the same applies are, to men as they well. Want to be this, exactly, like the, one of the reasons that I'm not playing macho men because if you haven't noticed, I'm not really macho. I may look on camera <laughs> because I'm a fucking amazing sexy scalp, but in reality, I'm very small, pale, white guy. And I also, I'm starting to get overweight because I'm sitting in front of computer all day long. So macho men, not really, like one of the reasons I'm not playing in MMOs as a guy that I cannot make like small wimpy mage, which that will be normal how you should make like play mage in World of Warcraft. Jump yeah, they are. yeah, so yeah. like I, I like I prefer play women in video games. So, you know, there is that. And then you know, so it's like it's really easy to like shrug it off because like yes, like she has the point that it is, you know, sexual fantasy and stuff like that. And it's inbred into the games industry. That's the point but she you tries to make, I think. Take it away and you know, and here is my issue. Fucking phrasing. Like screenshot from the screenshot from the website. Add eight things devs can do to make games less shitty for women. Mm. Well thank you for calling my game shitty. Like phrasing. For, like why yeah, not say it's, it's, eight things again, it's generalizing, better but... for a video game? Exactly. And like that's another thing. Like I had recently. I'm sorry. Sorry, I'm getting overly excited about it. Like for Lizzie and Shadows, for the game that I'm working. Like I literally spent like three months working with like uh, live on chat and with uh, on on Twitch. I was actually streaming, but then also working with other people about like making believable designs for female party members of the of the party. Yeah, in the in the RPG because our initially starting duo is like it's a guy and a girl. Uh, uh, his friend, and they're both are like the the like uh, archaeologists, excavators in their just environment. So they both have to have very functional adventuring uh, clothing because that's what they do. So I spent like a long time to make it like a nicely looking in a game, but also practical and with emphasis of like consciously not trying to sexualize her because that's not the spin of character. But again, we have other character which like she's a mage and she boasts about her sexuality so her design will be different so if someone in the, uh, identifies with more of, of a tomboyish female there is like there is the starting character but oh. if someone identifies with more sexualized character there is something else trying to make a variety and now, trying to make good effort and then someone calls me fucking misogynist like i was literally called women hater and rapist thank you <laughs> So, you know, that's the problem. And then we have, like, people like Anita Sarkinias who she automatically assumes that every game dev, and she has no, great no, ah, ah, she well, pro that's... She's probably a great person. But that's from what you... I can see from her videos is that, you know, phrasing. 
No, I get you. I get you. But there, she's trying to make a point at the end of the day, and that's how you that's how you get your point across. As you generalise, you can't say, "Oh, well, you can't constantly be saying." You know, it's for us talk shows like this that are here to kind of talk about the semantics. But when it comes to getting your point across, you can't sit there and go, "Oh, well, well not every game dev is like this." But this is generally how it is. You know, you, you have to just say, "Game developers do this. Game developers yeah, do that. But that's, Gamers but that's, that's are like this." Yeah, but that's how you get like people on the fans. Here's the thing. That's how you also. In... The fans. Oh, all... here's the thing. You Chris, also invoke if... a reaction from that as well. Yeah, Chris. Uh, but you know what kind of reaction? If you're sitting on a like, if you're sitting on the fence and someone is throwing stones at you, you're gonna fall off the fence, but the other side. Like that's the thing. Like, and then you have people yeah. like, and then you have, then you're gonna have people who, if they want to, if they want to generalize, they're gonna say. Like, they, they will not say, I see that Anita Sarkeesian has a point, but I don't agree with her. Like, they're gonna say, yes, there shouldn't be sexualization. And if they're gonna be asked, do you agree with Anita Sarkeesian, they just say no. And even though... You don't have to agree with her. You don't have to agree with her. You know what You know what it's done for me, right? I don't necessarily agree with the way that she does things. I, I kind of agree with you. I agree that it is generalization. It shouldn't be done that you way. It should be more fair. However, it has made me think about how I have written the characters in my game. It's made me think about the fact that when I initially wrote the, the, the first script for my game, everybody, every single person, apart from one person, apart from one character, was male. And that one character, that one female, was an annoying, whinging, like, proper... Like, yeah. Now, now, no, that, that was, that was, that wasn't intentional. It just happened to, just to happened, go that yeah. way. Now, I've, I've rethought it, and I've, I've, from that, I've taken it, taken it away, and I've thought, well, I could make the protagonist female, but I don't want to make the protagonist the protagonist female. I want to keep keep the protagonist male. However, there's loads of the satellite characters that I can now make female. Now I'm thinking about it. It doesn't make much difference. I can make them exactly the same character with exactly the same lines, but just make them female. It doesn't yeah. make that's one of the things. And one of the other things that she mentioned in in that article very briefly, again before we move on, um uh, sorry, Chris, Chris, uh, in, in wait, wait, talk. wait, Chris, while, while we at it, remember also to include different races in case you forgot about that as well. Oh, no, no, I've, I did that. I, <laughs> I was, I swear to God, honestly, I, I've got, I've got, I, in fact, one of the guys that I am changing uh, to a female yeah. uh, was a Chinese, uh, he was a Chinese scouser, I believe. From you, Liverpool. you know, you know, probably, <laughs> and I, I will do some generalization, you know, probably why you remember that? Because you live in UK and you have quite a lot of racial diversity, from what I've seen when not I where I live UK. actually. Where I live, we, oh. we have very very few um, any any kind of like black Asian. Uh, we don't have any anybody. That, that's here, interesting. Really. <laughs> it's like from 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 my time in UK, and I wasn't sitting only in London. I was like traveling and visiting friends around. Do you remember? I tried to meet with you and you didn't have time. Boo. Um, Come on, you were in London or something, right? Yeah. <laughs> I was in London, but I was traveling alone, and I went to uh, Manchester. Oh well, yeah. Okay, uh, so I think I think at the time, and maybe it was my language. birthday or something. There was something important on, yeah. and I couldn't come over. Oh, yeah, but. yeah, yeah. But uh, but you know, I saw like everywhere. I saw the you know, I saw the diversity. Manchester, you know, yeah. No, Manchester's like that, but I mean, you know, not only where Manchester, I live, but it's, even it's, also, even the smaller towns, and maybe it's not the diversity that you think about, like literally black people or like Asian people. It was more like the differences within the whiteness, if you so because like different shades of white, obviously. Whereas in Poland. It's a uh, 97% if I remember correctly ethnic poles. So in my country literally every everyone is white. <laughs> well I'm I'm half Hungarian so I've got a, you know I've got a perfect excuse yeah. to to have you know that kind of opinion that I'm Every, every, to me, everyone's equal. You I know, mean, unless you someone's an arsehole, you... they're equal yeah. to me. You know, if someone is an arsehole to me, I'm, I, they, they don't deserve my respect. Yeah. Don't care oh, what yeah, colour yeah, the yeah. skin is. I don't care what kind of religion they have. I don't care anything about, I don't care about the sex or anything like that, it's not important to me, but, can I, you know. Can I just say that there was, a, there was a game released a long, long time ago, possibly the first 3D, 3D, it was isometric, game called Ant Attack 3D, and it, you could play either a male or a female character, and there was no difference in stats or anything like that, there was no difference in the dialogue, you just could choose male or female. So there was complete gender ambiguity in that. Yeah, but that was one game out of the thousands that are out there. The point yeah, is, that is that she wants, game. she wants a change. She wants a change. I'm not saying it's not happened. Obviously, there's plenty of games where you can play females. I mean, actually, like, it's a lot easier in the earlier games to make it to make it simple. You can even use the same sprite because someday, like, if you have like 16 by 16, try to differentiate differentiate gender on that. We could like mm. literally 16 pixels. 
So, yeah, what it are you going like to say, Steve? It was like even easier back in the day. That's quite strikingly apparent that no one's kind of brought up yet. I don't want to antagonise anyone by saying this, but I do. fundamentally, uh, the game industry is a male industry. The customers mm -hmm. are male. You know, the demographic is male very predominantly. Now, I'm not saying that, that that's the right thing. I'm not saying that that's the way it should be. But when you've got the people that are in essentially like holding the pens and making the games, they're going to, you know, it's an artistic license for extension themselves. They're going to write the, their main character as a male because they are male. That's also one of the, the time. That's also one of the one of the things that she she addresses in in many of her, yeah. her talks. So, yeah. Yeah, like the, I the think with these is... type of scenarios, it's quite easy uh, to pick fault. I mean, why that's, that's what you, that's what, yeah. I mean, that's what that's what you need to be conscious about because, like, you you fall that into circle where you know your customers are all male. And so, you know, when they grow up and they become game developers, mostly game developers are male, and they start writing male yeah. characters. And now, then, you know, it only perpetuates the circle. So, if we want to have more True. diversified environment, and but if you want to change, and both, uh, yeah, if, but, I mean, if you want to change in this industry, yeah. then the way to do that isn't by trying to force people to go against the way that they used to do things. It's to it's to change the paradigm. It's to introduce something that's, new. And I mean, that is happening. Said, that is happening, but it's going to take a while yeah. to happen. Oh, that's, the that's, problem. Why I said, that's why I said phrasing. That's why I, I said phrasing because, well, like, uh, you know, for people who are like obvious about it or like logical and nor well adjusted adults, which, you know, most people are, in case you haven't noticed, we are not nut jobs. Like, it's it's better, like, in my opinion, it's better to, better to say to be non aggressive about it because, like, I've seen people, like, people told me literally in my face, we do not need more white male devs. Like, we don't need you. And this is one of the worst things well, that that's, you can do to a creator. That's individual, though. That isn't. That's a, the, the problem here is, is a societal problem in terms I mean, of. Even globally, you shouldn't say we don't need. Like it's not about look, look, having less. Patrick, of Patrick, you have, it's about having you, more. you are generalizing as much as she is there. Unfortunately, you're talking about it in terms of every, that one person that said something to me. I'm offended by. Oh, no. Now that's great. That's fine. You're allowed oh, no, to be offended. Was, oh no, no, no! I, I said that both. I saw it written generally, and I had it personalized. That so it's both yeah, no, generally no, and then both personally. That's fine. We get the generalization. We also get the fact that you personally you have it. But in terms of the societal problem, it's that males are dominant in general. Now that happens across Based, every industry. Do, males have dominant representation in the industry. Come on, Chris, phrasing. <laughs> what, whatever, I don't care about phrasing. It's not not important to me. I'm 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 opening myself up for criticism here. At the end of the day, to me personally, individually, everybody is equal. Now, however, and I don't consider myself sexist, racist, prejudiced, or anything like that. I consider myself very open. However, my brain. When I write things, as Steve just rightly said, when I write things, I write from a male's perspective. And I write from an indoctrinated kind of male's perspective in that the whole of society thinks th that particular way. What she's trying to do, however she goes about it, and not just her, lots of other feminists, however they go about it, they they are attempting to, and, and in fact, feminists, male or female, it doesn't. you don't have to be female to be a feminist, you know? Chris, you're literally arguing my point. No, like, no, I know. I'm just I, trying I, to I, calm it down a little bit because you're getting very, very heated I, about I, it. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, okay, so, so you know, like, okay, so uh, yeah, I forgot. Like, so sorry. Uh, the whole, the whole point, know, the whole point I'm trying to make is that, yeah. is at the end of the day, there's, it, sh she is making a change, and but she, you may not agree with her, but she will make, she will make some kind of impact. Oh, yeah. She, she's got lots of followers, lots of supporters, and I, I think it's a good thing. I think it's a good thing that these these kind of discussions are happening. I think it's a good thing that there, there, are, there are four males in this chat. None of us, I don't think, have said anything, you know, particularly sexist or anything like that, well, apart from having a giggle at some boobs earlier on. Well, I just that normal people. Like, uh, have you ever been to like a con? Like oh yeah. Oh don't, yes, of course, of course. So. I, I never been to. That's the um, same thing. You've got you've got groups of people. I've been to land parties. I mean, lots of land parties and cons and stuff. For God's sake, meant when me, Lou, and Steve are, are sat in a, in a room on our own. Yes, we ha we we as we can be sexist. Yes, we can be racist. Yes, we can be. That's what everybody's like when they're on their own. It's Chris, not doesn't Chris, mean that that's who we are. That just Chris, means that that's kind of part of our banter, if you know what I mean. Can Can I finish my fucking point? <laughs> <laughs> So my point was like, if it, so that's actually something that came up when I was watching um, 
errand, no not errand signal, there was this other good, uh, bunny hop. Uh, if you don't know the YouTuber Bunny Hop, he's doing a great. Uh, in, he has a great insight, and he's doing great critic videos about gaming. He went to a con, and it was like in the, he was. He went to the Dragon Con in the middle of Gamers Gate, like at the time when it was like the shittiest of the shitty st shit storms, and when people were flinging shit at each other all the time, and death threats were all all the all time high. And he went to a con, and everyone was like the most pleasant and beautiful and awesome human being on the planet and he had very good discussions and like it was just the greatest experience ever somehow like the most rabid and the most vile you know harassment and sexism is only happening online which proves that it's most only done by like mentally sick people not necessarily i have heard of a few incidents i can't remember the details specifically of where people have been you know well, females in particular have been touched up at cons. They've, they've, people have, you know, done that, inappropriate uh, things to them. Wasn't that on like E3? The... I, I can't remember the details. I just remember What's reading something remember about it a few times. Yeah. But anyway, let, let's move on before we get too far into this. But I think basically we're we kind of all on the same page. We're just arguing different yeah. points. We're arguing yeah, semantics. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. And you know, that's that's the sad thing about it, right? Like be, because the points are so extreme and because the generalizations are happening instead of trying to make a change people end up arguing semantics yeah um, exactly exactly and uh, I, I mean i don't see this as a, I, I see this as a debate i don't necessarily say that we're, we're arguing about it because again we are kind of arguing the same things we're just saying them in different <laughs> slightly different ways so exactly exactly so you know i like i see it as a point, pointless thing like i mean obviously like, it's good to have more female representation the video gaming and stuff like that but who's, are who's you playing? About semantics? Are Wrong. you playing the Ata breakout Atari breakout, Steve? I just turned it on, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Let's move on. Yeah, anyway, so yeah, let's move on from yeah. from all the, the all the stuff that we've just been talking about. Um, we've we've talked about Destiny a few times. I don't think any of us play Destiny, but uh, it <laughs> is a big thing in the news. Um, Destiny previously they released a. a, a a new raid DLC. I think I can't remember what it was called, the Hollow or something like that. I don't know. But it, apparently, someone played it, completed it on their own on the highest difficulty, and killed the end raid boss when they were like level thirty or something. So it was like it was utterly ridiculous. Now they released a patch to nerf that, and I've actually been listening to people at work um, talk about it. I think again, this was last Thursday or Friday. Um, but they, yeah, they, but they've, they've released a patch to nerf it, and apparently some of the favourite guns have been totally nerfed as well now. So people are getting really miffed off with it. But it's the same thing with every kind of MMO, isn't it? We always get this when, when yeah, it always happens. But with um, World of Warcraft, every time they release a new uh, DLC or whatever, a new raid area or a new in-game content, someone would do it over in a few hours after release. Yeah, and have a oh, have the, full loot table. Not the starting, not because not before the patch uh, patch two point oh. Well, what about that? Um, yeah, before, uh, before, like especially before Burning Crusade, most of the content, like there were instances of content which was physically impossible to finish. Like the numbers, like even if you would execute all forty men right in WoW perfectly, you would not be able to out heal the damage, like and out DPS before it happened. So you know, it was like the other way around back in back in the day. Mm. But yeah, now I mean, anyway, I thought it was it was topical. I think this is fairly old news now. I think it's about a week ago, but I thought I'd bring that up since we have talked about Destiny a few times. Um, next one, would I think you think you'll all find interesting? Anyway, there's a guy who's created a, a 42 player Civ 5 AI game, <laughs> and he streams it on Saturdays. I think it is, um, but he, he's documenting all of the stuff that's going on but it's a huge map but it's the, the world isn't it the entire world with the, all of the youtubes in it yeah and it's 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 on reddit i'm gonna paste a link I in mean, the chat all of them it's only 42 there's like what 216 countries in the world well well yeah. no in terms of the amount i think that's the amount of players you can have in civ or the, oh, it's it, the amount it of civilizations on, isn't it in the game i'm isn't not sure modded? about that isn't that modded i think like the maximum vanilla is 36 so but that might be are you uh are you start news reddit now chris no, no, I just, um, someone posted a link on Twitter and I happened to read it. I do read Reddit occasionally, but I don't use it. I wouldn't ever go and visit it off my own back, you know, it's not, not my thing. Um, but anyway, yeah, so the, this guy's documenting it. He's, he's, expl he's kind of telling you what's going on, but it's a game that's still going on. And it's, I think it's really interesting. It's kind of an interesting AI experiment that's, um, that's taking place. Have I got a few links for a few other things as well? I'll paste in the chat uh, to do with it. 
Um, in fact, I've got his Twitch channel here as well, which is T Pangolin. And, I mean, uh, you know, the, the AI in Civ is fairly simplistic in terms of decision making, right? But it's it has really nice, nice emerging beha behavior because of it, because of the mm. values. No. I think I think one of the things here is that is that only recently with the multi-core processors we've been able to do this kind of thing because um, <laughs> it's it's very re it's very CPU intensive and we all know for me, me Lou and Steve play Civ quite often at, so at some point it gets to a point where there's so many moves it takes 15 minutes or so not just because I'm taking ages to take a move but sometimes the AI takes a long time for it to process the moves and it's interesting that He's doing it. I don't know. I, th I think it's quite a cool experiment. I, I like it. I like. I like stuff. I like the emergent behavior. What what um, Patrick just mentioned. There. I love the idea that you can get simple systems in enough quantities to create these bizarre, emergent, unpredictable, chaotic behaviors. I love that. I'm, I'm just happy that Pol Poland created empire, empire, and they be beat up na Nazi Germany. So yay, Poland. <laughs> <laughs> Not this time. <laughs> I, I, I mean, I haven't been following it. I just, uh, I, you know, I read, I read quite a lot about it when I found oh, I, the I article. But really cool. uh, so, speaking of AI, actually, there's a, another AI that's uh, learned to play retro video games. Now, this has happened before. Yeah, I've seen this before. But they're talking about um, they're talking about deep learning here, which is a specific type of AI, which is learning from either no rules. And basically, just learning from um, learning from the pixels that are on the screen and events that happen. So, if you die, and there's you know, for example, um, the the play the one of the one of the things that they're playing is um, it's old Atari game, so it's Breakout, um, whatever you call it. I think the per first Breakout game I ever played was um, Hunt for Red October on the Atari ST. Breakout, you know, Breakout the yeah, the Hunt for Red October is a submarine game, wasn't it? No, the, no. The one I played was a, a breakout type game. And, what a uh, bizarre movie tie! -in. It even, yeah, it even had um, Sean Connery doing the, doing the voices. <laughs> yeah. Um, but anyway, I'll post that into chat again. But that's, uh, it, I, I, I found the article quite interesting. Excuse me. I'm also going to post post the Atari breakout Google thing into thing that uh, into chat that. Yeah, it sounds like that makes a noise. It does. It makes quite a loud noise as well, so you can hear it over the stream. But that's just a little game that uh, uh, that's actually referenced in the the article. But the deep learning thing's cool. If you're into AI, or you're into any kind of uh, you know deep learning stuff, have a, have a look at that. I, I'm going to say I, I've mentioned this before, but the AI in some games seems almost human. Um, and those games are usually Julian Gollop games. XCOM's AI at Superhuman was terrifyingly realistic and it bullied you and it chased you around the maps and it assaulted you and it just... It was it was a very good example of emergent behaviour because it just did not act in any way that was predictable. I was looking up the... Uh, terrifying. I was looking up, uh, on the AI, There's a, they did a video um, of this the AI for uh, Frozen Synapse. No, not Frozen Synapse, Frozen... Endzone. Endzone. Uh, uh, not Endzone, it's the other what, one. What game? Describe the game. Uh, mode 7, it's the... Um, you know, Frozen Synapse, it's there, it's the successor to Frozen Synapse. Oh! God, no, it was, it used to be called Frozen Endzone, but it's actually called Frozen Cortex. There we go, Cortex. Cortex. It's come to me at last. Um, I was watching the AI video on it from the one of the, the main devs there, Ian Hardman, and he's he explains how all the AI works, and basically it plans absolutely every single possible combination that it could could work with, and then each, each AI then makes a move depending on what it thinks you're going to do. And I mean, that's, that's just... chess AI. Yeah. Basically, it's chess Well, it is. AI. It's a turn-based game that... Um, Frozen Cortex, and it's really interesting listening to that because again, I'm at the pro I'm in the process of writing behavior trees for um, for the the AI in my game, but it's quite simple when I think. Of, I mean, it's it's going to end up being huge and complex, but in terms of how it works, it's quite simple. I don't have to program anything. I'm just programming if and else statements, you know, basically. Uh, and it's 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 complicated enough that, but if you had to program your own engine, that to me is. That's mind-boggling, absolutely mind-boggling yeah. to me. Mythalor got it, Cortex, but he's a bit late. <laughs> uh, did I post that? I didn't post that. No, I didn't have a link for that, sorry. I want to mention the the new Valve HTC 
collaboration because this is a particular interest to me being the VR person here. Um, but, but Valve have announced, along with HTC making the hardware, a new VR headset and the specs seem very, very tasty. Yeah. It's got two 1200 by 1080 displays, 90 Which frames is... per second refresh. It's, you know, this, Just... this already, the specs are already blowing out of the water. Just um, out of interest, Lou, have you seen the, uh, the Morpheus specs? I haven't, no. Because they're high. It's Sony, isn't it? Yeah. Well, what's the Morpheus? 100, yeah, but that's, uh, but that's got it's 120 so FPS. Right. But, but, what about the that, res? I think it's uh, 1080p each eye. Each eye? I think, or maybe it's 1080 by 960, some kind of resolution oh, that's... close to 1080. But, but is, isn't that like console only, so who gives a fuck? Uh, <laughs> I mean, like, that's the problem, like, you know, if, who cares if it's like really great if it won't gonna work on PC or on any other hardware? Whereas Oculus Rift or whatever, if they're gonna hopefully agree on standards, it's gonna work everywhere. Like you know, VR is already really shaky business because that's something totally new. It that's and that's something that you cannot market. You, you cannot market it because yeah. the f because you have to feel the unit. And now how I how am I going to feel it through internet, right? Mm. So it's really yeah, hard but I to think market. Uh, what's about to happen here is another format war. So you get a, gonna get a lot of people releasing hardware trying to vie for what would be the standard hardware. <sighs> yeah. And the interest uh, they're just gonna well, die. Yeah, Razor Razor are trying to make this open with them um, um the open VR stuff mm -hmm. that they're doing. The, the interesting thing about this is that? Razor doing it, yeah. Yeah, they, they were basing it off uh oh, Oculus, weren't they? Mythalos yeah, on it again. Um <laughs> But the interesting thing about this is that all of the other VR headsets so far have been marketed as sit-down products. You basically sit down in your chair and you do this. This one is going to come with a Steam VR base station, which allows you to walk around the room. Which what is a ballsy move. It is a ballsy move, that. Because the reason that Oculus have said this is a sit-down product over and over again is because the minute someone falls over with a VR headset on, they're going to get sued. Hello. Us people in England, we don't have fucking huge living rooms like everybody in America does. We can't, I can't even use my Kinect, for God's sake. Because every time I try and walk forward or backwards, I hit a shelf or a window, you know? And I've got but quite a big some... front Chris, work harder and buy a bigger house. <laughs> well, no, I, I, I'm, I'm going to, to but not everybody's going to. I'm, I'm one of the privileged, and you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a fairly good earner in the UK. Yeah. Not everybody who buys these are going to be able to afford the bloody bigger living room. Do you want to see something better? There is my room, there is my yeah, wall. Exactly. Like, I, I'm, like, I'm, like, I can literally touch it from, touch it from here. My room is like free by three and a half meters. It's, it's maybe. ridiculous. It's literally, yeah, it's literally bad. Working desk and pile of unwashed clothes. Imagine you saw when I was on the uh, on the um, the Oculus last time you were over here. You saw how I was with it. I wasn't even moving. I was like that. Yeah, yeah. I, I put it on my girlfriend and she did the same thing. She just sat there like this, and I had to kind of push her and move. Like, like I mean, you like, can't actually yeah. move in this. Like, like I'm, I don't mind. Like I'm honestly, I'm honestly way more excited about VR in terms of like productivity. Like imagine having a desktop VR. Oh, like I've instead of that. two screens. Instead of two screens that I have now, I have like literally 360 degrees sphere. I can put webs uh, like web browsers and windows everywhere. That's good. And in three dimensions, like depth, I can like pull up something from back to front to focus. Oh my god, that's going to be amazing. Have you, like, that's have you used a VR headset? I didn't. Right. Well, you know what? You know what? I've, I've, um, I've Patrick, got one. I've got an Oculus Rift DK2, and I've used the virtual desktop, and it is brilliant. If this, the resolution goes up on that, it is amazing. You have literally uh, a Hemisphere, sphere. yeah, and you can just move all your windows. Around. It's brilliant. So yes, it is as good as you think it is. The only problem is how tired am I going to have with this giant ass screen strapped to my? <laughs> it does. It isn't. It, to me, to when I when I've tried lose out, it, it doesn't feel like it's it's very. It's very light. Yeah, it doesn't feel like it would it would um, what's it called fatigue me. But the it's problem the problem I have with it is the fact that you have to put a headset on. And I know that sounds stupid because at the end of the day you have to in order to become immersed in the you know, in the screens and that, but I still don't think it's. I still don't think it's going to be a, a commercial success. I think professionally, for particular, you know, things like um, military training and you know, hospital stuff. I don't know. I'm trying to think of things off the top of my head. Education. I think it's a brilliant idea. I think it's amazing, in fact. And I think for enthusiasts, it will sell. But how many people are actually enthusiasts? 
even in this day and age, you know, we've got a lot of people who buy consoles and buy PCs, but there's not many people who have the setups that us guys have. I mean and if you're gonna take a look at the history of technology, it always starts with enthusiasts and then just it trickles down to all global audience. It, you are like, right. Uh... Like it will, it will refine and it will become more. You know, will get more mass appeal. I mean, for crying out loud, the video games used to be enthusiast thing before they become quite more mainstream, and, and they're still not as mainstream as they can be in the future. In they're ten not years' as time, as, as... in ten years' time, you'll see me sitting here with me, in my wheelchair. Complaining that we <laughs> shut up. <laughs> complaining that we were the first people to use VR. How dare the kids bloody get on it? Like back, a, in my, like a... back in my days, you have to strap it on your head and your <laughs> eyes bleed it because the resolution was shut. I tell you what, I'm hiring you as a voice actor for my game. That was awesome. <laughs> I, you're perfect for one of the guys I've got in mind. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Well, yeah, the, talking about mini discs. Look what we started. Look, we're talking about mini discs in chat. It's, mini discs were mini awesome. Discs. They were awesome, but what happened to them? Like zip discs, they were awesome back then. No, they, no, they weren't. Zip discs were terrible. Like, hundred megs. Were always the click of death. Hundred megs. That was amazing. I had an eighty meg hard drive. A hundred megs. Broke all the time. Well, yeah, but <laughs> sort of floppy discs. Yeah, they were shit as well. Yeah, they were utterly we, terrible. I mean, you know, we'll see. Probably, like, I mean, obviously, like, the first iteration of VR will probably be sort of barely acceptable anyway. So, you know, I'm like, I'm not excited for the first one. I'm excited for the fourth one. Or I'm, the fifth one. I'm that kind of person as well. I'm not an early adopter when it comes to technology. I probably will. When I think about it, I probably will get the VR, um, like an Oculus or, a, or the Vive when they come I'm out. What? Don't get me wrong, I will totally fucking buy it. It's just I'm not gonna get, get like super excited and think that this not... is my dream come true. I want to be more reserved, so I won't gonna get end up disappointed. I'm not putting any effort at all into VR game development. Oh yeah, oh yeah. N not for a while yet. Right, um, someone has written something about father.io. Yes, who's, that uh, was me. Um, have you had a look at this yet? Nope. So basically, you, um, you walk around with your phone um, your smartphone and your smartphone has kind of an overlay an AR overlay so you see through the phone camera and what you can basically do is play games with the people and shoot at them and um, in real environment laser tag yeah basically yeah. it is it's laser tag or um, laser quest or whatever you want to call it quasar um, I think this is great I'd love to play this I, I'm remember? quite into do... paint paintball and things like that do I'm you... quite into taking game stuff out of, into the real world so this looks and brilliant. Does Do any of you guys have access to a 3D printer? No. No. Oh, that's a shame because you could like f you could print yourself a holder for the smartphone in shape of a gun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So because you know walking with and that's not really cool. That's really fucking cool. Yeah. <laughs> I can see and, people's you know, uh, I can see people's smartphones getting um yeah, getting get smashed. Destroyed. Yeah, like the you I know mean, the Wii stuff. If you wanna stuff. make build a good casing for your smartphone, I think you're fine. Like you that's why that? I don't really want to hold it. You just need a wrist strap, just like the Wiimote. That's all you need. You know what I see what that as? What smartphones are they using on that video? Because the lights uh, are huge. Uh, I think they've got some kind of an add-on for it as well. I think it's got like lights on the back of it. You get a yeah. gun, you get an actual projectile to put on the front of it. <laughs> just that's just cool. your phone as Actually <laughs> shooting people. Oh shit, sorry, I didn't realise it was loaded. <laughs> actual shooter. You, yeah. know, you, you know what I see that as, right? That reminds me very much of the, the barcode thing that happened in the 90s. Oh, barcode barcode battlers. Was it Battler? Yeah, you, yeah. Could, you used to be able to like, scan barcodes from anything, anywhere, yeah. and... and what, what could you do just, with it? It would generate the it was stats like, uh, like Top Trumps, wasn't it? But you just got random yeah. stats. So you'd, have, a monster, you'd uh, have like a monster or a robot or something, and the, the barcode would determine its stats, so it'd give it intelligence and strength and dexterity. And and like that. If, if, if you knew how barcode co uh, worked, you could really easy... I doubt, I'm, I'm actually, pro I'm own, actually like, programming barcodes at the monster. moment for my, uh, for my main job, so I do know how barcodes work. It's just yeah. text data encoded, but you know, yeah, it, it's the, it, it's a gimmick, that, that father.io. It sounds awesome, but you play that, you play it once, and you'd never play it again. Yeah. Guarantee that. Because you probably smash you, know, you know how much I like things like that. Though, yeah, but you wouldn't, you wouldn't go, you wouldn't form a clan with it, would you? Imagine <laughs> that. Imagine playing a league I think game they with call that. that. A gang. If it's outside, <laughs> if it's the real I mean, world. Here, like, here's the thing. Like, as I said, if you would actually like print, three D print, really good holders for it, like really good guns, like for laser tanks, and you got like bunch of friends of yours excited about it, that's something that you could play ev like every couple of weekends or something, right? Mm. Um, 
but uh, it's not something that you would like catch on. I mean, come on, laser tag is not a pro thing. Why would that be? Hmm. It's a shame because like, I used to like really like that. Yeah, I mean, I used to enjoy it, but I again, I only did it once or twice really. I wish I wish I had friends to play more it more with, but I didn't back then. <laughs> I mean, I, I played one time uh, laser tag, and you know, it cost like thirty quid, which was uh, that's the problem. That was the problem. And yeah, it was very expensive back then. Really fucking expensive, and then you know, the problem was that I played it recently when I got really out of shape, and it was in the building with like three stories, so I had to like run up and down, and you, and you yeah. know, and in order not to get shot, you need to like crunch run. Because they were, they had like a lot of like crunch base. So I was like crunch running for like three hours up and down stairs. <laughs> Worst like you know post workout muscle age ever. <laughs> yeah, I I I did um, paintball for my stag do. Oh god, I, I, I've wanted to play paintball again for years, and I went. I, I was fucked. Within minutes, I was sweating like hell and just oh, yeah. st covered in nettle stings as well because I decided to do a dive away from people so I didn't get hit by the bloody paint and got jumped in a lot of nettles, idiot. Oh, yeah. Anyway. <laughs> right, Half-Life 3 has been announced. No, it's not. Balls. Uh... I'm, uh, I've just posted something in uh, in chat, the, the, the link. It's, it's basically clickbait, but the, the title... I just wanted to talk about the title, right? And I know we're clicking it, and we're, we're, we're baiting it, basically. Oh, I'm clicking to ad block. Like, oh. I'm refusing to give them my click money. <laughs> like, that's one of the reasons, like, click by the articles, so that's the reason I got, you know, ad block. Like, it's I will disable it for YouTube and for websites that I actually enjoy, and then I will mercilessly keep it on for clickbits like that. Just yeah. like a la last line from... Um, basically, the reason that this this whole article has come together is because the uh, this is coming from the Vive stuff from the new um, VR. That, that I think it's the the managing director or the CEO of Vive quoted something like, um, "Yes, maybe." I think it was a, it was a, it was a problem with the translation or something, and it was like, "Yes, maybe maybe Half Life three three might come on the Vive. Maybe the maybe the uh, the the you know the creating Half Life three for the Vive." And it's like. Oh, that was it. We are cooperating with Half Life, and I think, ellipsis, I hope you know it will be on it. What Half Life? What one, two, three? It, 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 shut up! Shut up! Half Stop it! <laughs> Half Life Two is a fantastic VR experience, as I've said before. That that also gave me VR sickness as well. But I think it was because the refresh rate was wrong, and uh, it wasn't dealing with it very well. Because your face was wrong. Right. Now onto the exciting news for us game devs. Uh, I have missed GDC? one or two stories out, but go on. GDC? GDC news? Finally? GDC, GDC yes. news. Uh, specifically two big news stories that have dropped for us game devs anyway. The first one being, and these were like hours apart that this news came out, so we were all watching it like with bated breath and we couldn't yeah. we couldn't wait for it. Unreal, Unreal Engine 4 is now free, fully free for developers, with a caveat. There's a catch. There's, there's, a a catch, there's yeah. also a catch, yes. However, uh, it's fully free, which is brilliant in one way, but as soon as you make $3,000, you have to pay 5% gross. Now, gross is basically before any profits. Sorry, before any before, expenses. Yeah. Before even Steam, like, storefront cut, which so that you, really hurts. You could quite easily, as an indie dev, if you've made maybe 3000 4000 or whatever, you could quite easily be in debt from making a game. Because yep. it's gross. If it was net, it would be acceptable. But to me, it's it's a no go. As but much as Unreal the... Four is is an appealing engine to me, I still I'm going to avoid it because of that. Have you got the option to buy it outright at first? Though? I don't think so. Now I think Not they've anymore. removed that well, entirely. Th no, there probably will be licensing options still available to, to to big developers if they want to pay them like hundred grand or whatever. You know the usual license fees and NDAs and stuff. That probably will be available, but. This will make it so that they they've made it they've made it clear that you can negotiate with them yeah. uh, if you're bigger developers. But for indie devs like like me and Patrick, I think it's unlikely that we would be able to negotiate with with a, a you know epic. Oh, of course, I think yeah. it's very unlikely. Um, and it's 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 basically again it's to me it's a bit of clickbait. It's basically saying it's now free. However, small print, you're going to get ripped by us. You know, it's 
I must admit, I didn't actually know what the gross part of it meant. I, I had no idea that it would would be that much of an impact because five percent doesn't sound like much. No, it doesn't. It doesn't sound like much, and that's the problem. And it's after three thousand dollars as well, which is what about fifteen hundred, seventeen hundred pounds. That's not a lot. If you're if you're not making that when you release a game, there's there's a major issue somewhere. Even if it's a even if it's a little mobile app, you know you've got problems with your marketing or your PR or something. Um, so basically, what like if your game is like I know like ten. 10 bucks, it's what 300 games sold, something like that. Or, yeah, or, yeah. You know. okay, if, if it's 10 bucks, 300 games sold, you will sell. Like, if you're but, on Steam and you have like semi competent game, you're gonna sell more than 1000 easily. But bear in mind that Unreal 4 is targeted directly at 3D games and directly at yeah. high fidelity AAA style games, you know, games like I'm trying to develop. Yeah. Unity, on the other hand, um. That also had a big announcement, which was Unity 5, uh, which is, has been out in beta for a while and I've been playing with, because uh, I'm a Unity Pro subscriber. Uh, Unity 5 is now free for indies. In fact, it's free for everybody. Now, the caveat there is that after $100,000 of, of revenue, you basically have to subscribe. There's no royalties. Oh, so you can basically download it and use the full thing. Everything. You, you Occlusion, culling, render it. textures. Cool. Absolutely everything. And yeah, but on... because yeah, that, that's the caveat. Like that's the important news, which a lot of people are forgetting. Because people are saying, "Oh yeah, yeah, it's free. It used to be free, right?" But the way the previous model worked is that yes, it was free, but the free version of an engine had a lot of stuff cut out of it. Like yeah. And and it had royalties support. as well. Yeah, multi-platform support. It had royal. It had ro royalties, and it had um, a lot of like high-end graphical things cut out. That's why a lot of uh, indie games, older ones that are made with Unity, look like shit because the game devs didn't even learn how to use the tools that they had because they had no access. Whereas with Unity 5, it's not only better than the previous iteration, but also you have access to everything from the get-go, and that's really exciting stuff. And the ceiling for income is based off your uh, financial year, so it's not only so it's not the it's not income on the project; it's your income as a financial entity. So let's like, let's uh, take an example, right? Let's take an example between Unity, um, Unity Five, and Unreal Engine Four. Let's say pie in the sky again, but let's say you make a million dollars, yeah, or million pounds or whatever. You'll be you'll be paying Epic if you went with Unreal Four. You'll be paying them fifty thousand pounds regardless of any other costs. I think there's probably a bit of leeway in that because it's up to th it's after 3000. Um if you did it with Unity, you would basically pay the subscription costs or a $1500 license. $1, well, Plus, if you have multiple um, oh, people there's also the other studio. there's also if you want to re release on different platforms you still have to buy like the android I was ask kit. You about that, yeah, plus the on top of that you have to also have licenses with android uh, sorry not android um if you want to do a playstation game you have to have licenses with the playstation licenses with nintendo and you have to have their dev kits and all the other shit that goes on with console development but it's Let's it's a no-brainer. It's a no-brainer. I mean, I'm a Unity fanboy anyway because I, I quite enjoy using the engine. It's C sharp. It's right up my street. I I'm used to it. It's all I know. I have to be honest with you. But financially, it's it's not it's nonsense. I mean, when Unreal released that news, I was like, Jesus Christ, that's good. That's cool. And then it slowly dawned on me. Oh, hang on. That's not actually as good as it sounds in the end. And then Unity released this, and they they were they were going on about it being game changing, and it was you know it's going to change the games industry forever. I think it is going to change the games industry forever because this allows this allows me to now cancel my my pro subscription. Bearing in mind that if you stay pro, you get things like analyt analytics, you get team server, uh, the cash server, all of the stuff that comes with bigger teams. So if you cloud pro, building, yeah, cloud building. Well, I, I know you only get cloud building for twelve months. You don't get that forever. Which, which was the one thing that's made me think, actually, maybe I shouldn't. They've also got an incentive if you're a pro user. Um, uh, they're using the hashtag level11 on, on Twitter. And uh, if you're a pro user, each month or week, I can't remember which one it is, they're releasing a certain number of assets from their asset store for free. So right now, you can get Playmaker for free, uh, which is a big, uh, like a big um, kind of newbie indie developer kind of unity plugin that allows you to create games very quickly I, it's not something i will use i've grabbed it because it's free and i'm like awesome and they've also got quite a few models on there they've got some futuristic grenades that were released last month or the month before that some some developers on now if they if they release the right assets the pro license is going to pay for itself 
So if I pay mm-hmm. 75, if, if I'm on the pro, the pro subscription, so if I pay 75 quid a, a month, which is comes works out about 48 quid, 48 quid, $78, something like that. It's, it is, it's unbelievable. It is unbelievable what they've done. I think, you know, what, what, why Unreal Engine did what they did and, you know, the way they, they, they went about it is that it's probably not really about, you know, getting actual sales. It's mostly about getting food in the, in the market because before they did that like basically entire generation of game developers were going to race with unity 5 skill set a unity skill set and only unity and you know because those people who are making indie games right now who are like you know younger than me or my i mean everyone that i know everyone that i know either worked on unity or is working with unity or at least knows their way around unity Mm -hmm. so you know like that's like 100 percent of workforce like just acclimated with that project. Funny thing about history, if you didn't knew that long time ago, uh, Photoshop had a competition. Photoshop totally white floor with the competition mm. because well, uh, while both programs were extremely Fireworks. expensive. Because, because there were... Uh, Pencher Pro. Pencher oh, Pencher Pro. Pro as well, yeah. No, it was even Forgot before Pencher Pro. It was even before Pencher Pro. Like, we're talking before color we're talking like really really old like it's a program who, like <laughs> no it's a program who no one remembers like it's a it's anecdotal like it was told to me by like 70 year old uh industry industry guy so like it's like you know we're talking like really old time like at times are like i think like it was photoshop too however uh, i just anyway, want to i just want to while you're talking about photoshop <laughs> Go on, go on, go on. Yes, I just wanted to finish. So, you know, what they did is that Photoshop just gave away licenses to free for students to use and for the people to teach on the, like, in the universities. And within a couple of years, like, the next generation of artists, when they went to the game studios or, like, you know, film studios or whatever for special effects, all they knew was Photoshop. So when there was the next question, like, what they should buy, everyone just bought licenses of Photoshop. And, the like... Literally, because there was no counter movement from the competition, they just died. So, well, you uni- know, that's why Unreal Engine did that. Because Unity if they have just do that- solidified. I mean, they were already very, very popular. Unity, anyway, yeah. but they've just solidified it with that move. Whatever they've done, they've just, they've just, they've just. I, mean, I, I am. I will be loyal to them for a good probably, while. I'm probably going to stay not- a pro scri- subscriber because they're so. Open. I mean, probably not solidify. Like, probably gonna keep like uh, they're gonna keep still like a lot of things. But you know, Unreal Engine Four has this nice that this air of AAA, and it will stay with that. So everyone who will want to go into three and you know, and there is this continuous mantra: you want to want in the, you want to work in AAA, you need to know C plus plus, and. Yeah. You know, yeah. Unity Engine use C plus plus. So basically, every one, every game that's indie games that they will want to work in AAA, they will grab Unity for. And the cool thing is that they can get it for free, Un- and they can mock around it. Uh, sorry, out for Unreal Four. So you know, they can play around with it, and they're gonna have the skill set, and they will not look at Unity Five. So that's why Unreal I, Engine solidified. I would like um, to pick up Unity Four. Uh, sorry, Unreal Four, and play around with it. Because of the C++, because I actually want to get into C++ at some point because it's Same. kind of a natural progression for me as a, as a game developer. But I still really enjoy working in Unity, and I think they're getting very, very close to being, like, proper AAA. In fact, there's already yeah. been some pro- proper AAA games released yeah. for, for Unity 5. Um, that Republic right. that you sent me the other day, Lou, mm. that's a Unity yeah. 5 game that, that was it was actually featured on their uh, on the two-hour presentation that they did. They had a guy from the studio come on, talk about it, and explain that they'd worked with Unity directly. I mean, Obviously, as well, one, one, sorry, Patrick, one other thing, Oculus is now natively supported by uh, by Unity as well. Not you, quite. You don't well, is. It, yeah, it's going to get full <laughs> native support. It's at the moment as it stands, um, and I, I appreciate Unity's got its problems. It's not perfect, you know. At the end of the day, I do speak to a lot of developers that sit there. You know, the mostly developers that do two D games and don't like Unity because of the amount of effort they have to do put in in comparison to writing their own engine or writing their own simple C++ or some guy today was talking about he uses something called XMonkey which I've never heard of until today um, and he Come loves on, that Unity has to be version sorry? Like, U- U- Unity, like Unity used to be pain in the butt like I actually I picked up Unity back in the day when it didn't support to be whatsoever you need to had to use some obscure C sharp framework in it and to inter- you had to basically interface with engine through a framework which was giant pain in the ass and it was limiting and it was horrible so yeah but now Unity has to to demote granted haven't worked with it but it's supposed to be quite alright so I think like that complaint is now less relevant 
but I mean, I'm personally very happy about the the news that they've released. Uh, and and oh, you know what? Definitely. Even even Notch has has picked up Unity Five. He posted a tweet yesterday. Uh, so he's got he's, he's got like a billion dollars. Well, All he does is sit around playing with games in jelly beans. Designs. Yeah, but that's beside the point. Is he's he's been an advocate of of you know just just own engine programming for many years and he's even so someone's convinced him to to pick up unity 5 and he's done it so you know it's it's making an impact on more than just more than just us indies it's making a, an impact on i mean yeah, it, it will you know, make ways. And ulti yeah ultimately it's it's a good thing because you know it's a competition it's a great thing to have competition and i'm happy for both engines actually there is third engine going into the works in case you have i i, I just added to the dog yeah I Which, can't remember uh, what it is though, go on. SARS 2 is okay. announced by Valve to be free oh, for yeah. everyone, no strings attached. So if you want, because you know, Valve is sitting on fucking pile of money, you can have, you know, they, can, they, can, they can afford to release engine for like completely fucking free. So uh, that's apparently what's happening. Well, I'll have a look at you that know, later on. So, so, so that's great, and you know, uh, I, I haven't worked with Source 2, the Dota 2 modding tools apparently are uh, Source 2, so you know, we'll see what kind of quality games people can produce, and you know, that's generally great, like we're getting more and more those high-end, really powerful engines, either by Unity going uh, free with Asterix, or Unity 5 getting a lot better, or Source 2 being finally done and released. So it's a great year for, for it's it's a just great it year. It is, for and it's, it's really, I it's, wrote a blog post yesterday about it, because mm -hmm. I was like, I, I had some bad news in my team yesterday, as well as the good news that um, that's, that's going on in the industry right now and, with and, GDC. And you know, and, and, you know what, what's, what's being exciting is like not now, I mean what's happening now it's exciting for us in developer, mm. uh, de developers. What's gonna happen in three and five years is that all the games that people are starting making now, they're gonna finish in like two, three years, like smaller ones because that's genuinely like the development cycle if you know already the engine. So you know in like five, six, seven years we're gonna have people with actual like skill set that they will know how to use those engines because right now just people don't know how to use them. So they will know how to use them, they'll be able to make them, and we're gonna have some really, really fucking good looking indie games. Yeah, and that's the and thing as well. That's that's the, the two new features that I'm very interested in is the PBR, um, which is physically based shaders, which is basically a different way of working yeah. from normal. As um, I'm very, I'm, I've been looking at them myself, and because and, even yeah. though I don't need to get involved in that generally, it's still something I need to know about yeah. as a pro. Programmer. And it's, it's kind of sad because it makes my skill set obsolete. Like I actually ah, learned yes. how to. I learned how to because for those who don't know how it used to. So let me explain because why is it so exciting the PBR? Because some people may not know. Uh, normally the way you used to do textures and to indicate like little details, the, like the, the surface the texture, like not the visual component, but sort of like the feel and how it reacts with light, is that you used to have special map on top of the color map called uh, normal map. Mm -hmm. And that would basically, in simple, simple terms, it would tell the engine what's the orientation of the pixel on the on the surface. So if the pixel is angled in a way. So if you have like sp small, like let's say I have in my hand, yeah, I could make it as a, as a flat, flat surface, and I could paint in those sort of crevices on the normal map, and the light would react with my hand as if it would be three-dimensional shapes. And the benefit of that is that the, it, it, you only take two passes on the actual graphics card rather than taking one pass and passing loads of verts to it. You just have a really simple yeah. plane or really simple geometry, and you let the normals do all the work for you. So yeah, the, the, the good thing is that you have very simple geometry. The bad thing is that you have to make multiple passes. Yeah, because like it's not single pass. And the good thing, and you know, it's really hard to do. Like it's actually doing good normal maps is a, is a mixture of using source texture and genera, gener, generating it and then post-processing and then sometimes like painting little details by hand. It's a skill set that people do for mm -hmm. a living. Yeah, yeah. And with PBR, you can just tell engine, like, you know, instead of like painting it like a plastic, you can just tell engine, hey, engine, this is plastic make it react like plastic and you don't have to you don't have to fuck around with like you know no normal map texturing and you don't have to fuck around with the like shader sure settings um i mean you still will be using for details but you know now on top of like details you have to use like you know you actually have to like paint the texture so you paint like. basically as far as i understood it you had a normal you still had normal maps you had to generate oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you still I, I have roughness maps which is a brand new 
uh, type of map which gives yeah, you I, the I, bumped I detail it, yeah. and the, the. I explained it sort of wrong. Sorry. Okay. Like it's, <laughs> it's it's more about like it's not about like details. Like you know, it's more about the texture because you can include the text tactile feel yeah, within yeah. the normal maps because that's also something which is ultimately the way uh, metal reflects light and the way rock reflects light is affected by the roughness of it. And then also, but you know, some shaders on top. So you had this, you had this giant process, multi-process of you know, you know, adjusting normal maps and adjusting your shaders, and now you can substitute it with uh, this PBR. Like you can simplify it. You don't. You have can to... simplify it greatly, yeah. in that what one of them, well, yeah. the way that Unity does it, Unity used to have a, a different shader. Now shaders are just bits of code that tell the graphics card how to render a face. That's all it is. Um, it, previously in Unity, you used to have lots and lots and lots of different shaders and they all did different things individually now what you've got is one shader um and the materials themselves control how how and the you faces tell what are kind of material it is so yeah, yeah i that's, mean that's you can great. still create additional shaders and there will be uh use cases but, for more complicated yeah. pbr shaders but it's still a lot better and a lot quicker for us indie mm -hmm. devs to get get things out there and for AAA as well, like it's, yeah, yeah. it's really great because like it's rapidly up, uh, approaching the situation where you know you can make because now the bane of AAA is that you can you need a ridiculous amount of artists and programmers to make something because there's just so much work hours in it and we get like more and more more tools that save time so smaller teams with less budget can make better looking games with the same amount of work hours. Which you know is ultimately great progress. Yeah, everyone wins. Exactly, exactly. Anyway, I can tell that Steve is the most bored he's ever been on this show. So let's shut up about game game development and talk about his favourite subject, which is Metal Gear Solid. Ha! <laughs> uh, no, I just wanted to quickly mention because obviously me and Sam are big Metal Gear Solid fans. Uh, Metal Gear Solid Phantom Pain has got a release date at last, and which it's the first of September um, on PS4. And po probably Xbox One. Not entirely sure about that. I don't really follow Xbox One news. I don't know. Um, but it's it's got a f September the fifteenth release date for PC. I bought a PS4 specifically to buy this game, not knowing it would come out on PC or not thinking. And I'm now almost, almost this this I'm this close to to deciding to wait for those two weeks and just get it on PC instead because it's still going to be sixty quid on both platforms as well. Even on PC, and usually PC is about fifty, you know, about twenty quid cheaper, isn't it? But yeah. Anyway, I know none of you guys care about that, but the people who are watching may do. Oh. <laughs> someone just told me that they love me. I don't even know the, who he or she is, but you're uh, me, love. That no, was that that was that wasn't to you. That was to me, obviously. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was the one talking. Yeah, but who yeah. you? Whatever. Right, anyway, so anybody else got any other news? Any other things that they want to talk about? Steve? Anything happened in your life this week, that, apart from personal no, stuff I've, that we don't care about? I've been just a hermit for the past couple of weeks, like I said, mate, so this weekend, some serious gaming going on. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm actually coming over to you guys this weekend. Um, Alright. I might I might pop in and see one or two, what, uh, you two, uh, maybe at different points, depending. Or maybe, I don't know, we'll see. I'll chat with you right after the show. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but uh, yes, I think uh, I think we're pretty much done for the show. So sorry, if, sorry if those of you who are watching weren't interested in the um, in the game dev stuff. But it was a particularly exciting week for me and uh, Patrick, at least. To be uh, fair, there was like a very little. Game there was actually so, very little. Yeah. Most of it was game talk. Uh, I actually expected us to go on a bit more about it. But and thank you very much, Patrick, for for coming on the show. It's uh, Yay, it, it has much. definitely it's been in, as enthusiastic as I expected it to be. <laughs> um, again, I'll let you do your quick pimpage for your game and stuff. So if you want to, uh, all right, guys. So uh, yeah, um, Elysian Shadows. That's what I'm doing. Um, thankfully, you have unifying branding. So if you want to learn about Elysian Shadows, you can just go to our web page, which is ElysianShadows.com. Or if you want to check out Twitter, it's also Elysian underscore Shadows. That's all because Twitter doesn't have .com. Uh, and then we have also really great thing about us is that we try to be really, really open about game development, just as Chris is. Um, though Chris is more of a live stream guy, we're doing more YouTube videos. So you can check that on um, on YouTube, Adventures in Game Development. And, you know, that's it. So, you know, we're, we're doing a, you know, video game. <laughs> uh, RPG, it's um, the 
I we're doing RPG on Sega Dreamcast, but also for PC and other platforms. I just wanted I to talk, make it for Dreamcast. I just wanted to <laughs> ask you about that, the Dreamcast thing. So, I mean, yeah. I have asked you before, but I can tell Lou's at least interested. It's piqued his interest. Why? Yeah. Why on the Dreamcast? Why have you chosen um, that platform? I mean, it's because we can, and that's actually that's. Uh, <laughs> but can you? Uh, is it is it going to sell? Is it a viable business model? I mean, it did because like uh, like we made we, when we had our Kickstarter, the most bold version of the game was uh, the Dreamcast one, mm-hmm. and the average was ninety eight dollars, even though you could buy a game for thirty bucks. So there is clearly enthusiast market for it. So, so and, well, you know, we also, enthusiast market for the and we, we also are on PC, so there is that. And right. you know, the, the, the basically why why it is is because like our lead engine guy Falco, he's uh he's it's his pet project since he was like little. He was just working on it and rewriting as he grew older and and did better stuff. So you know, it's his childhood dream come true now, literally. And there is some really surprisingly great stuff that you can do with Dreamcast, like, you know, normal mapping, something which I was talking about this episode. And the the art style that, you know, we try to be, ve- like, we try to go for, like, the old feel of the games, but also be next-gen about it. Mm. So, you know, we can u- we, we try to use all the crazy stuff that we can, like, you know, normal mapping on Dreamcast, or on more power- powerful platforms, normal mapping and custom shaders, like, you know, reflectivity, transparency, all the crazy graphical things that we can, we have like fully, um, you have a fully supported uh, physical engine in there, so we can put like physical forces and it's basically like Halo 2 of 2D RPGs. Cool. So, you know, that's cool. Oh, um, that's, that's a good enough answer for me. That's, uh, that's, yeah. uh, so I'll, put, I'll, I'll put a link into the chat as well for, to it. I wish you. Yeah, I wish you look, look with that. I said I was. Yeah. I was intrigued when I first f- uh, found out about it, and it's. Uh, yeah. I'm glad that I'm glad that the Kickstarter went yeah. well, and and yeah. it's so, so, so it's in, in the works. And if someone wants to check out the progress, they can either watch our videos and just pop on forum and ask questions. And you know, if someone wants to get into, like, we will also release our engine with the game itself. So, if you will want to make your own mods or uh, something for our game or your own game altogether, you can just you know use our engine. Speaking of engine works. NG Wars, we're gonna also release our engine to use, and you know the advantage is that, you know, we're gonna support shield of platforms like you know PC, Mac, Linux, uh, Dreamcast, obviously, and then mobiles as well, uh, both That's iOS cool. and Android. So, and you know, if admirable. You want, so if you want to be like super multi-platform, you can do that in France. Buy so, it yeah. for all the platforms. All the platforms. Actually, like, <laughs> we also want to do like uh, the the consoles, like the you know the um, PlayStation and uh, and Xbox. But that depends if we're gonna get the toolkits for it. Mm. Yeah, no, yeah, and unfortunately, they cost money. Uh, licenses yeah. involved and Actually, complexities we can get the- as well. We can get them through watermelon, which we are buddies buddies with it. But it depends when we're gonna if we're gonna have time to make it. Like that's more of a thing. So yeah, that's great. Maybe you'll have time if it's successful when you go live when you sell it. Oh yeah. Right. So anyway, thank you very much, everybody, for watching. Uh, chat has been very active this week, and uh, we've invoked a fair amount of reactions, which is always good. Sorry, we haven't been uh, as inclusive as we normally are, but we've had a very very enthusiastic guest on. Um, Next week we have another guest. We're trying to get people in uh, every week now, but it all depends on schedules. We can't always promise it. Uh, next week we'll have another guest, and it's actually someone who's in chat, uh, Sam Mithalo. Uh, I've forgotten his second name. Sam. <laughs> what? That's, that's, Sam Mithalo. That's Sam, his name. Sam Mithalo Richards. There we go. Uh, and he's he's been a long time follower of uh, of the sh- of this show and previous shows that that both me and Patrick have been on. So I'm quite looking forward to meeting him, quite looking forward to seeing what he's got to say. It's weirdly meta that, isn't it? Like someone who normally watches being suddenly on the show. Yeah, um, again, I think we're probably going to be back onto games again next week, but uh, watch this space. We may be coming up with something else game dev related, depending on, uh, on how I feel about that and how much time I've got. But yes, thank you very much, everybody, for watching. If you are interested in us and you haven't seen us before, you can join us uh, every Wednesday at 7.30 p.m. GMT on this channel, on twitch.tv forward slash Resonance Arcade. 
Uh, we do do Monday streams as well at 7.30 p.m. At the moment, it's a little bit touch and go because Sam, the main commentator on the games we're, pl games we're playing at the moment, he's he's moving house. We're hoping he'll, he'll be back next week or it could be the week after, but we'll, we'll see. We're playing Metal Gear Solid 3. We're nearly at the end of it. We've been nearly at the end of it for about four weeks now. Um, we, we, we've got one more session left before we've completed that. Then we're moving on to Metal Gear Solid 4 and then uh, possibly we're going to get Lou, let Lou stream from his own, own PC, possibly. Or maybe even Steve. I don't know. It depends on how they feel about that but we'll, we'll discuss that later at, at, so you can't play games time. no you can't not the not that don't take 15 hours to to play just because you've got no stand power sorry <laughs> um you can also follow us on twitter at resonance arcade we don't have many followers so if you don't follow us and you're watching please go and follow us because we don't have any friends um we upload all of our videos to youtube.com forward slash resonance arcade and we do have a website but it's got a placeholder on at the moment because lou is a lazy bastard and he still hasn't done a fucking basic template for me to put the website together <laughs> all i want to do is list the youtube videos and the tweets that's all i want to do that's all i want to do and maybe upcoming shows possibly Sunday, I will try and do something on Sunday. Will you? What about my game then? What about the interface for my game that you've, uh, you've been putting off for about eight years? <laughs> See? Dun, dun, he doesn't dun. have any answers. He doesn't have any answers. He gets a girlfriend and that's it. He's off. He's, he's, <laughs> he's... <sighs> right, anyway. Thanks a lot for watching, everybody. We'll catch you later. See you next week. Bye-bye.